मला काय आवाज
Good morning to one and all present over here and welcome to this webinar conducted by Swasthavrutta Department of Honorable Shri Anna Sahib Dange, Ayurved Medical College, Ashta Sangli. Today's webinar's title is Swastha Jagadam 2022. As the title says, Swastha means health and Jagadam means world. So our today's webinar will be focusing on health-related conditions or problems which are now getting common in our day-to-day lives. I am Pavan Tanaji Kutukade, student from third year of this college, will guide you throughout this webinar. It is a national webinar on prevention of non-communicable diseases with special reference to diabetes mellitus. To get best and maximum knowledge from this webinar, we start our today's webinar with God's name. So I request everyone to sit calm and emphasize your mind into the prayer to bring enthusiasm and get ready for this webinar. We start with Sansta Geet, followed by the Madharistha. संत ज्ञानेश्वर शिक्षण संस्थेचे संस्थापक अध्यक्ष ज्येष्ठ साहित्यिक कविवर्य अन्ना साहेब डांगी यांनी शब्दबद्ध केलेले संत ज्ञानेश्वर शिक्षण संस्थेचे संस्थागीत गायक मिलिंद कांबळे व ए के पाटील संगीत संयोजन धनाजी ताते अमोल वाघ कोरस स्नेहल गायकवाड पूनम पाटील जयश्री पाटील सारिका इतकरकर फिरोज मुलानी आणि दादासो दबरे तब्येत सुरू झालं Thank you. 
अलंकार पंडित भावे पंडित भावे शिकुन खावे हे साथ नित साथ कहावे जीत जीवनी नवे गावे इतने माथे इतने दगड़ भक्ति भावे दई धरावे दे माती चितले तगर भक्ति भावे रुदई धरावे कुंग विद्वते चतोर विद होइल साक्षात्कार होइल साक्षात्कार जय 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 कार ज्ञानियो गरदा जय जय I appreciate everyone's presence for this webinar here. Now I request Dr. Nitin Tatpuri sir to give an introduction on today's webinar. Very good morning to everyone. Myself, Dr. Nitin Balakrishnan Tadpuje, Professor and HOD, Sosurutta Department and Organizing Secretary of today's national webinar, Swasti Jagatam 2022. It gives me a great pleasure to extend a warm welcome on behalf of Honorable Sri Anna Sahib Dange, 
Ayurvedic Medical College, Ashtar. I welcome Honorable Sri Anna Saheb Dange, the founder and chairman of Sant Dhaneshwar Shikshan Sansta, Islampur. I also welcome Honorable Sri Rajendra Ji Dange, secretary of Sant Dhaneshwar Shikshan Sansta, Islampur, and executive director, Honorable Sri R. A. Kanai Sir, Sant Dhaneshwar Shikshan Sansta, Islampur. I welcome the MUHS observer, Dr. Vidya B. Vasnik Ma'am, from Government Ayurved College, Nagpur. I welcome today's chief guest, Professor and Dean, Dr. Milinji Godbole Sir, guest speakers, Dr. Yugantara Kadam Madam, Dr. P. Sudhakar Reddy Sir, Dr. Ketki Wag Madam. I also welcome chairpersons, Professor Dr. Vikas Kathani Sir, Professor Dr. Rahul Nakil Sir, and Dr. Amit Patil Sir. I also welcome our principal, Dr. Ashok Ji Wali Sir. I welcome all the participants of this webinar. Department of Swasurta and Yoga, Honorable Sri Anna Saheb Dange Ayurved College, Ashta, has organized national webinar, Swasti Jagatam 2022. The aim of this webinar is to enhance the knowledge regarding non-communicable diseases, especially focusing on diabetes. Our eminent speakers will elaborate various aspects of this topic in this webinar. Thank you for your valuable presence and being here today. Thank you, sir. As sir has given a glimpse of this webinar, I am sure that this webinar will be an interesting one. Now I request our respected principal, Dr. Ashopali sir, to deliver a few words for this webinar. Good morning, all of you. Santa <coughs> Dhaneshwar Shikshan Sanstad, Ayurved Medical College, Anna Saheb Dange Ayurved Medical College. As the principal, I welcome you all. <coughs> My dear friends, Santa Dhaneshwar Shikshan Sosta Islampur, having 44 branches in uh, especially Ayurveda, Engineering, uh, Ashram Shala, International Public School, like this, 44 branches are there. Since 2020, we have started the Ayurved College, and which is uh, affiliated to the MHS Nashik, and uh, it is uh, approved by the NCISM Delhi. My dear friends, I am very happy to say that our Anna Saheb Dange Ayurved Medical College is the only college in Maharashtra which is accredited by the NAC with B plus gradation. Also, we have ISO certified courses. My dear friends, I am very happy to see in this webinar that our Sastavurta department is well equipped department and our staff especially the staff related with the uh, social department is well educated, well experienced, and they are very interested, uh, especially in teaching. In medical college, because uh, especially on the Ayurved day, the concept of the Ayurved diet especially, and so many camps, so many lectures of the Ayurved diet we have taken uh, on the day of Ayurved day as the concept of the Ayurved diet. Ajadika, 75 years, Ajadika, Pachatar Baras Ke Baat, is this is, we have taken so many uh, camps and uh, other lectures, uh, especially uh, related with the Sosumta department. So I am very happy to say that our uh, this webinar is uh, very fruitful to all the delegates, especially newcomers. I am also welcome all the chairpersons, all the resource persons, and also I also welcome that uh, MHS observer, Dr. Vidya Vastik, Madam, and today's chief guest, my dear friend, Dr. Milind Godbolesan. I welcome you all 
on behalf of Anna Saheb Dangde Ayurved Medical College, and I hope this webinar will hundred percent fruitful, and it is very useful to all the delegates. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Today we are glad to have some special people with us, and I would like to introduce them. We have chief guest Dr. Milind Godbole, sir. Our first guest speaker, Dr. Yugantar Kadam, ma'am, with chairperson Dr. Vikas Khatni, sir. He is HOD from Bhai Sahib Savant Ayurved Medical College, Savantwadi. Our second guest speaker, Dr. P. Sudhakar Reddy, sir, chairperson Dr. Rahul Nakhil, sir. is hod and professor from lrp college islampur our third guest speaker dr kitki varma chairperson dr amit patil sir is hod from ayurved medical college chipur as we have such provocative teachers with us i am sure that this webinar is going to be very knowledgeable and beneficial in studies or in any other way for all of us and i would also like to bring in everyone's notice that today we have as university observer dr vidya babura vasnik ma'am with us we welcome you ma'am now i request dr ashwini koth ma'am to introduce our chief guest Thank you, Pawan. Good morning, all of you. Myself, Dr. Ashwini Kaur, Associate Professor, Department of Social Health mm -hmm. and Yoga, in Andhra Shri Anna Sahib Dangi Ayurvedic Medical College, Ashta, and also Organizing Coordinator for today's National Webinar, Swasthya Jagadam 2022. It is my great pleasure to welcome and introduce our chief guest for today's National Webinar, Dr. Mili Kaur Bolis. Welcome, sir. Sir is presently working as dean of Ashwin Ayurved Medical College, postgraduate training and research center, Kodoli, and professor, Department of Social Health and Yoga. He had completed BMS from Vasant Dada Patil Ayurved Medical College, Sangli, PG diploma in Social Health and MD Social Health in Pune University. He has great experience for teaching as well as administrative level. His UG teaching experience is about thirty years. PG teaching experience about eighteen years. And PhD PhD teaching experience is of ten years. Sir has guided PhD students, PG scholars as a guide, principal, and I use member as. Sir has uh, published more than forty research articles in national and international journals. Sir has organized various ROTPs, seminars, CMEs, and workshops. He has participated more than eighty CMEs, seminars, workshops, and also worked as a resource person for the same. Currently, he is principal investigator for research project in Ayush titled "Intervention in School Going Children to Correct Anemia and Malnutrition," funded by Ministry of Ayush, New Delhi. He has been appointed as member of committee by CCIM, New Delhi, to finalize the syllabus of PG in Sosota and Yoga on September 2010. Member of State Advisory Committee and member of the National Committee of World Ayush Expo 2019 at Novi Mumbai. As a member of CCM Visitation Committee, chairman chairman of ad hoc board of studies in naturopathy and yogic sciences, and recently he is appointed as senate member of MHS Nashik Revenue Division Pune and member of non communicable diseases research committee in MHS Nashik. He has also achieved many honors and awards like best teacher award by students opinion. From YSPM Kodoli in 2005, member of academic council in Madras Nashik, PG BOS member of Madras Nashik from 2007 to 2012, BOS member of Dwapar University Pune from 2018. Now I request. 
to our respected chief guest dr milinji gorbole sir please address our today's national webinar swasthya jagatam 2022 good morning namaste i am audible i am audible yes sir yes yes sir okay thank you madam very good morning to all of you i congratulate honorable sir anna sahib dangel with medical college for organizing this uh, national webinar swasthya jagatam 2022 on non communicable Uh, this is a special reference to uh, diabetes mellitus as we all know out of 100 percent non communicable diseases any non communicable diseases diabetes mellitus or uh, madhumeha is one of the most important disease uh, in non communicable diseases spread of this disease is a uh, very much in our community as we all know this disease is uh, due to lifestyle emerging uh, lifestyle emerging disease also death rate is also this sir you are not audible please check your mic please once again sir you are not audible And that requires change in lifestyle, also diet, uh, knowledge, then exercise, also yoga, meditation, stress-free environment, and positive attitude towards life is very important. And today, this uh, webinar, I go through this uh, uh, webinars. speakers dr kadam adam dr sudha great sir dr kitki wag madam all the eminent speakers and uh, all aspect of diabetes mellitus are covered under this webinar from prevention of uh, to enhancing uh, of immunity also taken uh, consideration in this webinar modern aspect as well as patyapatya Ahar and yoga for immunity enhancing. Very nice uh, chapters are selected for this uh, webinar. Uh, I congratulate uh, patron of this. Sir, you are uh, not audible, sir. Hello, audible. Uh, I am audible. Hello. Sound is yes, much lower, sir. Sir, sir. You are audible, sir. Are not. Egg. perfectly audible very Hello. slow sound i am also not uh, audible hello i am audible or not sir you are hello. audible hello sir good morning you are audible hello sir. hello madam madhe awaz cut hoto hai asa hello hello sir please check your internet connection your voice is breaking sir one minute please sir you are audible but the sound is not quality yes some disturbance is there okay okay, okay. ha one some disturbance is there please clear it yes yes
there is a range problem hello i am audible yes sir yes sir you are audible sir but uh, the sound is okay or not hello hello sir hello i am audible na sound is okay or not hello what is sir yes sir yes sir you are audible sir okay, okay thank Please you sir continue sir thank you uh, thank you for uh, uh, giving me opportunity as the chief guest for this uh, webinar Uh, sorry, there is uh, maybe range problem, and uh, that's why sound is not clear. But I am very happy for organizing this seminar regarding diabetes mellitus because uh, prevention of uh, diabetes mellitus is uh, very important, as well as uh, uh, in our society awareness regarding diabetes mellitus, uh, regarding this disease, uh, diet. And Also, the role of yoga and uh, other things also very important. Speakers are very uh, eminent and very knowledgeable. Also, our chairpersons are also very uh, eminent uh, professors or teachers. And uh, also, uh, Vasnik Madam, who is uh, appointed as a MHS representative, I congratulate uh, Dr. Valish Sir, Dr. Tapuja Sir. Dr. Kurth Madam, Dr. Yamla Sir Madam, and also other organizing team for organizing this uh, national webinar regarding uh, awareness uh, to create non-communicable diseases and also uh, regarding uh, diabetes mellitus, and which will uh, help to our society and also uh, to participate in this national webinar. And get a, a very recent knowledge, update knowledge regarding diabetes mellitus. Thank you for me inviting as a chief guest for this uh, national webinar, and uh, I congratulate also to the institute again and uh, all the best wishes for our uh, uh, participants, and they will enrich knowledge regarding diabetes mellitus. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, I request Dr. Nitin Tapuje, sir, to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Yugantara Kadamna. It's my great pleasure. to welcome and introduce our first guest speaker dr yugandara ramesh kadam madam presently madam working as a professor in the department of community medicine in krishna institute of medical sciences karat her educational qualifications are mbbs md in community medicine dgo depm that is diploma in environmental protection and management a cpme that is advanced course in medical education technology her total teaching experience is 32 years she is post graduate teacher since 15 years she has published 30 research papers and 44 publications she has <coughs> delivered lectures on various health topics like adolescent health aids nutrition cancers reproductive health etc she is work as a resource person for research methodology workshop medical education rntcp environmental health for gram panchayat members etc i sincerely request dr yugantara kadam madam to start her lecture thank you uh, good morning everyone Good morning, ma'am. Uh huh. 
just a minute. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, about the diabetes, I think since ancient times, we know about diabetes mellitus and its first uh, written descriptions, they are available nearly 1,500 years back in Egyptian uh, literature or uh, in inscriptions. Uh, Indians also, they know about uh, diabetes and they have described it as a madhumeha, so they know that uh, sugar is present in the urine. Uh, so they, uh, they know about the signs and symptoms and they know what is happening in the body. Uh, more than that, uh, so it was uh, nearly, uh, uh, then around, I think, 400 and 500 AD, uh, Charaka and uh, uh, Shruta, they have described two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. But nearly um, um, uh, more than 2,000 years or uh, 15 or 1,800 years, they are required to know about exact cause, what it was. And the process was started with the identification of uh, islets of Langerhans. So these are the cell, small islets. They were identified in the pancreatic tissue by a PhD student called as a Langerhan. And it, he has uh, this, uh, given name to it as a islets of Langerhan. But its function was known in latter year. So nearly 20 years after that in 1889, uh, Mering and Minkowski. So these were the two persons. Uh, what they have done, they have removed the pancreas and uh, in the dog and they, they found that a dog developed the diabetes. So they understood that there is something related with the pancreas which is causing the diabetes if we remove the pancreas. Uh, then in uh, 1909 uh, and 10, uh, so Mayers and Schiffer, so these were the two persons, they identified something has been secreted by the or produced by the uh, beta cells of uh, islet of Langerhans and they have given name to it as a insulin because in the Latin, uh, this island is known as the or it is called as the insula. So what is produced by insula is the insulin. So it was understood that insulin uh, deficiency that is resulting into the diabetes and then first breakthrough come in 1921. I think everyone knows about it that Banting, Best and Collip. So they were able to get the extract insulin and when it was injected, uh, so it, it was able to reverse the diabetes. So this is how the treatment of diabetes was started. So, so after all, what is the diabetes? So it is a chronic disease that occurs either when the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin or it cannot, whatever has been produced, body is not able to use it effectively. So there is development of the resistance and insulin as we know that it regulates the blood sugar. So what is the etiopathology of diabetes? So it is the dysfunction or destruction of the pancreatic beta cells. So we are not able to produce the insulin. And it is very interesting that after the age of 30 years, uh, beta cell, if they are getting destroyed or their uh, function is not normal, so they will not be renewed. And that is why then it uh, damage becomes permanent. Uh, so there are many mechanisms that lead to decline in the function. So what are the reasons? So it may be uh, the genetic predisposition or the epigenetic processes, autoimmunity, concurrent illnesses, inflammations, infections, environmental factors. So, so many things are there which cause defect or dysfunction of the beta cells. Now, when the diabetes is developed, uncontrolled diabetes that means that it is a hyperglycemia or raised blood sugar. Now this raised blood sugar over the time leads to serious damages to the nerves and blood vessels. So damage to the blood vessel is very important thing because the uh, vessels which um, serves the nerves, they are also getting affected and ultimately 
it affects the whole uh, all the systems of the body or organs of the body they get affected as the vessels are affected now if you come to see the world scenario why the diabetes is very important and we are uh, conducting a webinar today so 8.5% of the adults in 2014 above the age of 18 years they had the diabetes so number wise the number is very high and the direct cause of uh, deaths okay um uh, 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 cause, um deaths caused by the diabetes was the 1.5 million so it is also a huge loss and if you say see uh the 48% of all the deaths which are caused by the diabetes they were below the age of 70 years that means the deaths were premature so we uh this premature death means we are losing that much human years which are very important for us and that is why diabetes is very um public health problem all over the world and we have to work for it so between 2000 and 2016 what happened so there was 5% increase in the premature mortality from diabetes uh in high income countries this mortality was little bit reduced from 2000 to 2010 but again it was increased but this increase was constant in the low income countries or the countries like india also uh and uh, there that is why the problem is still increasing and we have to take care now if you see the type of diabetes i am uh, i will not uh, explain all the types of diabetes because nearly uh, 25 30 uh, types are there depending upon various genetic uh, involvement it may be a monogenetic polygenetic so uh, type 1 diabetes uh, also known as insulin dependent diabetes juvenile diabetes childhood onset of uh, diabetes so now we are using the type 1 diabetes now it is characterized by the deficient insulin production and it requires daily administration of insulin so earlier onset and requirement of insulin is there uh, here we don't know its cause and therefore we don't know how to prevent it as we don't know the cause okay now the risk factors for type 1 diabetes uh, it is a certain genetic haplotypes and unknown environmental factors so these are the two things where the genetic uh, types uh, they are not is still in our hand and environmental factors may play the important role so epigenetic factors so but we don't know about it much more so that is the reason why we are not able to prevent it Uh, now what are the symptoms of type 1 diabetes so it is the polyuria that is the excessive excretion of urine polydipsia that is the thirst then polyphagia constant hunger in spite of that constant hunger and per person is eating there is a weight loss vision changes may be there there is a fatigue so these symptoms usually they occur suddenly in the type 1 disease type 2 diabetes it is also known as non insulin dependent or adult onset of diabetes mellitus results from body's ineffective use of insulin so insulin production is quite sufficient but body is not able to utilize it because of the development of resistance to it uh, so more than 95% of the people they are suffering from the type 2 diabetes so it is the most common type uh, so this type 2 diabetes is uh, usually associated with the excess body weight and physical inactivity so these are the important two factors they are causing the type 2 diabetes which is the most common and that is why uh, in uh, some way we can prevent it it is possible now what are the risk factors so age Uh, as you know uh, advancing age definitely diabetes uh, occurs um, with the advancing age now in indian population uh, the um, age for development of the diabetes is a decade earlier so we are more prone to develop the diabetes so we have to take more care uh, diabetes uh, when whenever there is history of uh, diabetes in the first degree relatives like the 
parents or siblings we are at more risk history of generational diabetes gestational diabetes cardiovascular diseases and its risk factors they are also risk factor to the diabetes or vice versa uh, ethnicity south asians afro caribbean hispanic they are at more risk of diabetes but if you see towards it um, they are non modifiable risk factors so they are not in our hand we can't choose our parents we can't uh, age will advance on its own so what uh, what we can do here is the environmental factors or the other factors like the physical inactivity and the obesity we can control it even though we are having the history so what what we will do we will postpone the development of the diabetes but here these are the modifiable risk factors overweight or the obesity and physical inactivity so these are the two important uh, things uh, which they are in our hand where they have they play the role whether you are having the non modifiable risk factor or not and you can protect yourself from the type 2 diabetes uh now the symptoms of the type 2 diabetes they are similar to the type 1 but they are often less marked and as they are less marked what happens many times uh, we uh, patient uh, or the person uh, uh, fails to identify them so this rise in the blood sugar may be very um, uh, slow slowly it is uh, um, increasing and uh, the symptoms they are not much marked so they fail to understand them or to fail them and therefore diagnosis is delayed and that may be the reason why many times the patients are diagnosed with the uh, complications itself so that is the uh, one factor very important uh, usually the detection of the type 2 diabetes is the accidental so patient is coming for some other uh, symptoms or some other uh, this thing and in routine checkup you pick up them uh as a having the diabetes uh, with the help of blood sugar level uh now until recently uh this diabetes was seen only in the adults but nowadays uh it is occurring increasingly frequently in the children and even in the adults so maturity onset of diabetes of youth and even in the children means here even though uh, the child is suffering from the diabetes so it, it we we are able to control the diabetes with the help of oral glycemic agent uh, insulin is not required <clears throat> now this is the another type third type hyperglycemia first detected during the pregnancy so it may be of two types first it is a diabetes mellitus and in the routine screening during the antenatal period we are able to diagnose it during the pregnancy or it may be a gestational diabetes so that means uh, mother was non diabetic before she um, uh, had the pregnancy but with the development of the pregnancy or with her pregnancy her blood sugar level is gradually increasing so gestational diabetes so these are the two types of diabetes which are associated with the pregnancy now gestational diabetes is the hyperglycemia uh, usually the blood glucose levels they are above the normal but they may not be um, uh, but they are just below the diagnostic values which are um, we are using for diagnosis of diabetes uh, so it is usually diagnosed through the prenatal screening so antenatal period in the first trimester and then in the second trimester usually the blood sugar levels fasting pp they are done um rather than through the reported symptoms now uh, we have to do that because uh, uh, gestational diabetes uh, is associated with the increased risk of complications during the pregnancy and at the time of delivery that is why its identification and treatment is very important now those women okay they, those who have developed the gestational diabetes and their children uh they are again come under the high risk category so again we have to make them aware that they have to control their weight and they have to maintain their physical activity exercise and even for the children their lifestyle has to be healthy uh, since the beginning uh, the mother has to take care of it 
Now, this is another condition where the impaired glucose tolerance and impaired fasting glycemia. So, IGT and IFG. So, it is an intermediate condition, a transition between the normality and diabetes. Now, these people, they are at high risk of progressing to type 2 diabetes. But uh, again, it is not inevitable. Uh, still, they can revert back if they take care of uh, their diet, their obesity, and their exercise. Now, how we do diagnosis? and how we do monitoring. So these are two important things because diagnosis and later on monitoring of the blood sugar is very important to prevent the complications. Uh, so early diagnosis uh, uh, is done with the blood sugar. As we know, it is real, uh, relatively inexpensive. So it is an easy way. Uh, it is usually done by the two methods, venous uh, plasma glucose and capillary. So capillary uh, glucose is a little bit higher than the venous. Usually we prefer venous uh, glucose estimation, but uh, in the <clears throat> low income countries or in the very peripheral remote areas where the laboratories may not be available, where there we can use the capillary testing. <clears throat> now, if our, we are doing this test in a asymptomatic people, then we have to repeat the test uh, again with the same test and um, uh, as soon as possible to confirm the diagnosis. If the person is uh, uh, symptomatic, then definitely one test is helpful. Another uh, um, this uh, test is uh, this glycated hemoglobin. So glycated hemoglobin gives you the uh, past um, uh, hemoglo uh, this um, glucose level in the last three months uh, or eight to uh, ten uh, weeks, and uh, it give, gives you the better idea about the gl um, uh, glucose levels in the blood in the past also, and it is also helpful for the monitoring of the uh, diabetes or your treatment. Now, if the plasma gluco glucose is more than 325 uh, milligram per cent, then um, uh, and if the some symptoms are present or absent, you have to go for the urine ketones because uh, usually <clears throat> these higher levels of the blood sugar levels, they are associated with the complications called as the ketoacidosis. And uh, <clears throat> sometimes in very remote areas when the blood glucose estimation is not possible, then you can use the urine glucose testing uh, to confirm the suspicion of diabetes, okay? Those who are with the symptoms, but we cannot use that method in the asymptomatic people. Person is symptomatic, you are suspecting and no other method is available. So you can go for the urine glucose test and if it is positive, then you can refer the patient further. Uh, a negative urine test doesn't exclude diabetes. So you have to understand that uh, positive will definitely tell that um, blood sugar level they are high, but the negative test may not, uh, doesn't exclude the diabetes. Now, what are the health impact? Why we are more worried? Uh, so it is the damage to the heart, blood vessels, eyes, kidneys, and nerves. That is the one thing. Then uh, adults with diabetes have a three to four fold increase in the risk of heart attacks and stroke. Now, the stroke, again, associated with the disability, so it is, again, long-term phenomena. Our person becomes dependent, that is the another thing. Then diabetic foot, as you know, so ulcerations and uh, amputation leading to, again, the um, this um, disability. Uh, then uh, retinopathy, diabetic retinopathy leading to blindness, and again, that is one disability, uh, patient becomes dependent on the family. And the renal failure. So renal failure, as you know, then uh, you have to go for the dialysis again and again. So quality of life gets hampered with all these complications. So all levels of preventions are very much important in the uh, diabetes. So first is the premodal prevention and aim is to prevent the emergence of risk factors in a community. So whatever our uh, lifestyle, Indian lifestyle is very healthy lifestyle and we have to maintain that and uh, use of fast foods and alcohol uh, and uh, um, uh, very um, what we can say lack of exercise, um, work, work pattern, sitting, uh, sedentary lifestyle. So all these things we have to prevent. 
then the primary prevention here aim is to <clears throat> uh, prevent the development of diabetes so simple lifestyle measures they have shown they are effective in preventing or delaying the onset of type 2 diabetes uh, here the main uh, thing is to achieve and maintain the healthy body weight be physically active so doing at least 30 minutes of regular moderate intensity activity on most of days means nearly 5 days a week 30 minutes of exercise is needed so it is not only the 30 minutes of exercise and then full day you keep on sitting watching television or on your mobile it is not the thing but you have to be active throughout your day even though you are uh, job is sitting so intermittently every half an hour you have to move from your sit change your position have a small walk uh, you have to stretch your body and uh, this is very important more activity is required for the weight control if you are already obese then you have to do the more activities eat healthy diet uh, diet avoiding sugar and saturated fats so these are the two important things now again uh, many people they say, say that sugar doesn't cause diabetes sugar may not cause diabetes directly but it uh, helps in uh, uh, gaining the weight and once you are obese then uh, definitely diabetes will be there then definitely saturated fats they are um, they will um, definitely they cause the atherosclerosis and the lipid profile is changed and that is again uh, dangerous in the diabetes so in the very bad saturated fat is the cream okay cream of the milk so uh, we have to think of that so any fat which is solid at the uh, room temperature is uh, not a good fat it is a saturated fat then avoid tobacco and alcohol use uh, smoking increases the risk of diabetes and cardiovascular diseases because tobacco uh, uh, also affects the uh, blood vessels uh, and uh, that is why uh, the uh, these two um, uh, habits or addictions has to be avoided and uh, whatever uh, just we have seen the lifestyle changes no so it's begin uh, it's beginning or we have to start or initiate in the childhood itself so when it becomes the habit uh, in the adult life to change uh, totally it becomes a little bit difficult but if you train our children then definitely it will be a good thing now the secondary prevention uh, here the already diabetes has started and our aim is to reduce the onset of complications that is the main thing so it is by lowering of blood glucose levels the levels of other known risk factors that damage the blood vessel and it is mainly the tobacco alcohol and other things are there we are discussing it now the management of diabetes is of two types one is the non-pharmacological management and it includes it is the mainstay of diabetes management a healthy balanced diet to achieve or maintain the normal body weight uh, whenever the patients are overweight you have to give them low calorie diet regular physical activity that is a must thing so <clears throat> daily physical activity it has to be appropriate for their physical capabilities very important because usually diabetes uh, is uh, in the old age then uh, many times they have already hypertension or asthma or many other problems they are there so we have to consult the appropriate um, uh, doctors in that uh, uh, this uh, uh, this thing uh, specialty and then we have to advise them the physical activity so usually walking is the best thing and slowly they can increase their uh, um, uh, uh, pace as well as the um, uh, how much they are uh, uh, walking so at least 30 minute walk per day for uh, 30 minutes so it comes around 150 minutes exercise in a week so at least 150 so minimum three days it should not be only on one or two days but it has to be uh, minimum uh, three days uh, they have to do it and ideally it is better to do the uh, exercise on five days a week so 30 minutes per day 
so tobacco alcohol use is, has to be avoided now in the pharmacological management so i have taken first the diet and physical exercise it is a non pharmacological uh, way of treating the diabetes so usually when the diabetes is uh, um, detected at a early phase okay so that means just the um, blood sugar levels they are not too high um, blood vessel involvement is not there complications still they have not developed so you can start uh, you can manage the those patients with the diet and physical exercise but when uh, but you have to monitor the blood sugar levels because a uh, prolonged hyperglycemia it will uh, deteriorate the patient's condition so we have to think of that so blood sugar level has to be maintained within a normal limit if we are only on diet and physical exercise blood sugar levels they are not getting managed then we have to go for the metformin or those patients uh, the, uh, those who are having the higher blood sugar levels or involvement of other organs is there then we should not uh, treat those patients on diet and physical exercise for the betterment of the patient so we have to think that uh, now metformin is the, usually the drug of choice because it doesn't cause the weight gain or chances of hypoglycemia Uh, is very less but so hypoglycemia is another complication which which is very uh, dangerous to the uh, patient so <clears throat> metformin is usually started when metformin is contraindicated or it is not tolerated by patient then sulfonyl urea so the, you can start uh, with the sulfonyl urea uh, but again uh, chances of hypoglycemia and weight gain is there so these are the two disadvantages of it now uh, with the sulfonyl urea urea so if a patient they are not getting uh, stabilized then we can shift to the insulin so either only insulin or insulin along with the oral hypoglycemic agent that is the way how patient can be treated so i am not going in detail of it um, <clears throat> also at the same time you have to control the blood pressure so usually diabetic patient uh they develop the blood pressure so every time you have to measure the blood pressure you have to also um uh, suggest them how the diet has to be because salt intake is associated with the blood pressure role of uh, fresh vegetables uh, especially leafy vegetables and fruits it is there so you have to explain them the dash diet Uh, then estimation of blood lipids to uh, find out the lipid profile and if required you have to control it by using the appropriate um, uh, drugs now uh, what will be the target of glycemic control how much blood sugar has to be controlled now here the first thing is very important you have to achieve the euglycemic state as um, low as possible Uh, so towards the normality but many times patient may not tolerate so important is to avoid the hypoglycemia okay and why it is required so to avoid the microvascular complications even the microvascular complications you can avoid so downside of the tight blood glucose control uh, leads to hypoglycemia which is a dangerous side effect so we have to avoid it so it has to be a very well balanced how you are uh controlling the blood glucose level now monitoring how we are monitoring so either we are using the glycated hemoglobin hba1c so <clears throat> 7% is the expected for the majority of the patient so 7% of the hba1c is okay patients treated with diet physical activity and metformin so you can encourage to have the lower hba1c so around 6.5 between 6.5 to 7 but majority can have the 7 so hba1c of 8 is allowed those patients whose <coughs> diabetes is very severe and those who are having uh, repeated frequent attacks of the severe hypoglycemia so don't control too tight so hba1c of 8 is okay because this patient already have very low life expectancy so you can have that much level uh, now uh, here uh, we have to think about the interventions that are both cost saving and feasible in low and middle income countries so especially those who are treating the patients in the villages um, so blood glucose control <clears throat> 
blood pressure control and foot care so these are the three important things in the uh, diabetes uh, we have to have a good control and already i have told you how much glycemic control has to be there how much tight how much loose depending upon the patient's condition blood pressure checking is very important every time and uh, we have to start the appropriate treatment uh, wherever is required because again the kidney function both diabetes affects the kidneys and uh, again the blood pressure may create more complications so it has to be a well balanced thing and foot care to avoid the diabetic foot and leading to amputation uh then another fourth thing is the uh, screening and treatment for the retinopathy so which causes the blindness we will see how we frequently we have to do the screening then blood uh, lipid uh, control and the screening for the early signs of uh, diabetic nephropathy so these six things we have to keep in mind when we are um, uh, treating the diabetic patient now the prevention and management of complications of diabetes so it is a tertiary prevention so once the uh, already diabetes is there that is the secondary prevention and once the uh, complications that start arising so it becomes the tertiary prevention so we are we want to prevent and manage the complications so acute complications of diabetes they are hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia so <clears throat> they are emergencies okay uh so hypoglycemia you know if signs and symptoms how to treat that hyperglycemia ketoacidosis and hyper osmolar condition so these are the two important things always we have to keep in mind when the altered consciousness and other things when the patient with diabetes comes uh, to your opds and uh, then uh, next complications okay so they are the microvascular complications and macrovascular complications so again we can divide them into the microvascular and macrovascular complications now the microvascular complications uh, they are um, seen in the long standing diabetes with uncontrolled blood, blood glucose levels so that is why it is very important that control of blood glucose is important than controlling the patient on only diet and exercise so many times what happens uh, doctors feel that I, i will control the patient on only di diet and exercise but if blood sugar levels if they are not getting to the normality then definitely you have to go for the oral hypoglycemic agent now uh, why we uh, this microvascular complications they are important because it is the uh, nephropathy neuropathy diabetic foot complication then retinopathy so <clears throat> they are typically clinically silent until they are advanced so in the beginning you may not or you will fail to appreciate even patient is fail to appreciate the things and that is why controlling blood sugar is very important <clears throat> and you have to do the screening to identify them as early as possible <coughs> now diabetic eye disease it is a leading cause of blindness so in india also we are having large number of patients of diabetes so this complication is very common uh, so it includes the diabetic retinopathy macular edema cataract and glaucoma so these four things can be seen in the diabetes now risk factors for diabetic retinopathy there it is the duration of the diabetes poor glycemic control hypertension diabetic kidney disease dyslipidemia so if you see all these factors they are interrelated diabetes and these risk factors and they may be the uh, one of the complication of the diabetes now uh, prevention for uh, how we can prevent so for, uh, to prevent the retinopathy or to identify the other complication at the earliest uh screening has to be done by annually so every 6 month screening has to be done by the ophthalmologist and the good control of glycemia blood pressure dyslipidemia <clears throat> so it can slow the progression of diabetes retinopathy now diabetic kidney disease poor glycemic control elevated blood pressures genetic susceptibility <clears throat> so these are the risk factor for the kidney disease symptoms and signs earliest clinical signs are elevated blood pressure level now elevated blood pressure level 
may tell you the kidney or kidney functions <clears throat> will lead to the blood pressure uh, high, higher blood pressure levels now a moderately increased urine albumin excretion so that is one one important investigation so when the um, patient starts excreting urine albumin so it indicates involvement of the kidney now peripheral edema uh, starts at a late stage so usually dependent edema on the foot it indicates the renal involvement is little bit much more then you have to do the other investigation and treat accordingly now <clears throat> renal failure so signs of ure uh, uremia nausea itching anorexia so these are the signs and uh, if it is a renal failure then you have to go for the hemodialysis dialysis peritoneal dialysis so these are the other things so for kidney function screening is required once a year for um, eyes it is a biannual every 6 month for the kidney every year to delay the onset and slow the progression of diabetic kidney disease what is required is again the good, good glycemic control but you have to take care of the hypoglycemia then maintain the blood pressure level it has to be controlled at the level of 130 by 80 um and um, you have to use the anti hypertensive agents so usually ac inhibitors they are used then diuretic may be used so depending upon the conditions and physician will decide uh, so again the control of the smoking and dyslipidemia so tobacco use i think in india uh, it is the uh, non smoke tobacco that is the chewable tobacco <clears throat> is also a problem so it may be the may not be smoking but the tobacco is use has to be stopped <clears throat> then diabetic neuropathy uh, so usually it is a distal symmetrical peripheral neuropathy so it involves um, uh, mainly sensory and autonomic neuropathy so <clears throat> uh, usually neuropathy can be present without symptoms in the initial phase uh, so peripheral neuropathy the signs and symptoms it is the sensory loss unsteadiness so diabetic patient many times they are having problem while walking they are very gait is very unsteady uh, sensory symptoms like the pain then burning sensation tingling numbness okay so these are the common symptoms of the peripheral neuropathy then autonomic neuropathy uh, so lack of awareness of hypoglycemia so they don't get the um, they don't feel the signs of hypoglycemia then orthostatic hypotension is very common there is a resting tachycardia then diarrhea constipation and fecal incontinence whenever it is seen in the diabetic patient you suspect the autonomic neuropathy erectile dysfunction urinary incontinence and bladder dysfunction so uh, all these um, uh, organs they are involved um, because of the autonomic neuropathy so how we can prevent exclude first exclude the other causes so it is alcohol stop it chemotherapy may be there associated malignancies vitamin b12 deficiency so you have to correct so usually uh, patients are given with the b complex um, uh, tablets hypothyroidism renal diseases malignancies hiv infections so you have to rule out that improve glycemic control and specialized care so uh, you have to send a patient to the neurophysicians for better uh, treatment then macrovascular complications macrovascular complications mainly it is the coronary heart disease then uh, cerebrovascular diseases cvds and peripheral vascular diseases <clears throat> so risk factors for cvd age family history of cvd overweight and obesity so they are there along with that okay so <clears throat> it is the diabetes then uh, how you can prevent microvascular complications control of blood pressure control of blood lipids and antiplatelet treatment so diabetic patients um you whenever uh, blood pressure is raising you have to start it find out the blood profile and control the blood lipids otherwise coronary vascular diseases and cardiovascular diseases they are very common 
uh, antiplatelet treatment, especially to stop these both complications, coronary as, as well as cerebrovascular diseases. So you have to um, monitor it and start the treatment. So I think I have finished my presentation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have finished my uh, presentation. Yes, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request our chairperson, Dr. Vikas Khatne, sir, to say a few guiding words for this session. Good morning, everybody. Before I start my opinion on the as a chairperson and on the lecture of Dr. Yugantara Patil Kadam, madam, I am firstly congratulate Sri Anna Saheb Dange Ayurved Medical College and postgraduate and research. Institute of Asta and Department of Swastavrutta and Yoga for organizing such a wonderful webinar on the subject of diabetes management as a non-communicable disease, as a Swastya Gatam 2022. So, Madam is in the very easy language, elaborate and present all the points which are covering the diabetes mellitus as a community-based problem. Everybody knows nowadays in India, diabetes mellitus is increasing in the community is very fast. And some people are saying that India is going to make a global capital of diabetes mellitus in the future. So, Madam is in the community-based medicine is described the different levels of prevention. And one of them is primordial prevention is the very important thing for the prevention as well as the control of the diabetes mellitus. We are now start to such type of primordial uh, in a prevention level from the school going children. Because we are seeing the government of Maharashtra is the ban in the different canteens which are providing the junk foods, fast foods and to initiate the people to provide the home milk to the children in their school bags for afternoon lunch. So this is the some initiatives are very essential for prevention of diabetes mellitus from the primordial level. So this is the very important thing in the community to now to see the diabetes mellitus not only as a medical problem. This is also one of the very biggest community problem in the future. And one thing is the related with the diabetes mellitus is as a disease responsible for the different type of the complications like cardiac diseases, then neuropathies, retinopathies. But nowadays we have seen diabetes is always seen as a comorbidity factor in the different type of the infectious diseases also. Even the corona we are facing, the maximum death of corona patients are due to the diabetes mellitus patients. So the disease is always related with each and every disease when that is infectious in the nature. So that is the another danger of this thing, which are one of the very important cause for the mortality rate increasing in the different diseases also. Lastly, before I'm concluding my point, once again, I am saying the madam, congratulate you how to co cover all the topics and dietary habits about the lack of exercise in the different peoples, the how to motivate the peoples for going to such preventive measures as well as the controlling measures for this disease. This is the basically lifestyle disorder. The hormonal base, but mainly hormonal imbalance is related to the lifestyle. And today's lifestyle is very prone for the diabetes mellitus. And sometimes we are also thinking to the integrated approach of diabetes mellitus control and the prevention with Ayurveda and the allopathy or any modern medicine is the very essential for the today's condition because the traditional dietary or food habits is are really preventing the such type of the disease. 
when we are going to your past so when we are studying the drugs of ayurvedic are the food products which are describing in the ayurvedic nutritional science so we can be integratedly to study on the glycemic level of these food products which are how useful in the diabetes mellitus mental uh, management as a food products or the dietary products so we can when work as a integratedly in this field we will really with the traditional approach and the modern approach with both the hands is working equally so the disease can be really preventable and the controllable we are not only uh, look to the control the blood sugar we are also to control the different type of the complications of the diabetes mellitus is also very essential because sometime the level of increasing in the glucose level is the time being so that time when we are the pre diabetic condition is very important to just the that condition in the particular time and to take the some specific type of the measures to preventing the disease to pre diabetic patient converting into the diabetic patients so primordial type of the prevention is working on that level so madam once again i am very thankful to you you have to very nice presentation on the subject of diabetes mellitus on the base of community level and i am also very thankful to the honorable anna saheb dange ayurved medical college and the vg center for inviting me as a chair person on this webinar so thank you once again have a nice day thank you sir once once again thank you dr yugandara kadamba thank you dr vikas kathane sir for this extensively knowledgeable session moving forward i request dr hemlata korema to introduce our second speaker dr sudhakar reddy sir good morning all i am dr hemlata kore working as an assistant professor in department of sastra and yoga honorable shri anna saheb dange ayurved medical college ashta today's our second session guest speaker is dr p sudhakar reddy sir welcome sir and i also welcome chairperson of this session dr rahul lakil sir now i am giving introduction about our guest speaker dr p sudhakar reddy sir who is working as professor and hod in department of pg studies in sosur to thank you ma'am jss ayurved medical college mysore karnataka sir has completed md in sosur to and also diploma in yoga and naturopathy he has 21 years teaching experience in sosur to and yoga for ug and also 15 years medical statistics and research methodology for pg sir also participated and presented papers in national and international seminars workshops and conferences sir also written a book titled dr reddy's comprehensive guide to swasthya which published by chokamba sanskrit sansthan new delhi he also published more than 30 articles in national and international journals sir is committee member in preparing ccim syllabus for ug and pg swasurta and pg diploma in swasurta he is also recognized pg guide for swasurta by uhs bangalore and guided for nine candidates he is also bios member bhu varanasi and kelly university welcome he served as chair person in government ayurveda college mysore institutional ethics committee and member in jss ayurved medical college mysore he also served as member in iec jss amc mysore he has also done many research activities i sincerely request dr p sudhakar reddy sir to give us your valuable guidance thank you dr himalata madam am i audible am i audible 
Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hemlata, for a nice introduction. Uh, um, Guru Bionamaha. My first congratulations to Anand Sahib Danga Ayurveda Medical College for organizing a timely needed webinar on non communicable diseases, especially on diabetes mellitus. I am thankful to our uh, patrons of ADMC Ayurveda College, Professor Dr. Ashok Wali, sir, Dr. Nitin, sir, Dr. Ashwati Medam, and Dr. Hemalata, and also my uh, senior, my mentor, Milind Godbole, sir, today's uh, chief guest, and my good friend, Dr. Rahul Nakil, sir. Uh, is skin is visible? The skin is visible? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Right, sir. Welcome to our JSA Sairveda Medical Hospital where I am working and seeking blessings from our Dr. Dhanvantari and our this is Sutur Guru Parampara. Today I am going to speak regarding the role of Patya Patya in diabetes mellitus and Ayurvedic aspect. As we know, Dr. Yugantara Madam has already given a uh, detailed account on diabetes mellitus called modern. Here, without going detail about the Ayurveda, I am concentrating only Ahara and Vihara, uh, which have a role in diabetes mellitus. As we know, in 2020, according to the International Diabetes Federation, 463 million people have diabetes in the world and 88 million people in the Southeast Asia region. Out of this 88 million people in Southeast Asia region, 77 million belongs to India. The prevalence in urban area ranges between 10.9 and 14.2 and prevalence in India is 7.8 among population aged 20 years and above with much higher prevalence among the individual aged above 50. So here we should know that the prevalence of diabetes mellitus in India from the 20 years to 50 years, the peak level. I am speaking about the type 2 diabetes mellitus and we know juvenile diabetes mellitus is also increasing but here 20 to 50 years age group is more prone to get the diabetes mellitus. And one more fact is that one is one in six people, that is 17% of the people in the world with diabetes from India only. The number is projected to grow by 2045 to become 134 million as per the International Diabetes Foundation. Already India became capital of diabetes and the projected will be 134. So this is the uh, bitter facts regarding the diabetes mellitus. And uh, what is the burden of the disease in the community? So the, over the past three decades, the burden of diabetes in terms of death, disability, adjusted life year has more than double in India. The GVD Explore Risk Assessment Framework estimated that diabetes related disability adjusted life year attributable to high risk for stroke, coronary disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, chronic kidney disease, diarrheal diseases, lower respiratory tract diseases, dietary iron insufficiency, neonatal disorders. These are the more risk, high risk factors and people of diabetes that are going to get. Risk factors, the most the important risk factor to get diabetes is body mass index. This is 36% diabetes is daily. Hello? Sorry to disturb but the I can't see your slide. So slides, slides are not visible. Okay, okay. Wait. Sir, slide one, sir, now one, one. Slide is one not minute, moving. Sir. One minute, one. Minute. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Now, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Proceed. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Proceed. So this was I was speaking to regarding burden of the disease in the uh, community and the risk factors. That is body mass index is the most uh, major risk factor contributing the diabetes mellitus. Besides that, basic body mass index such as dietary risk, tobacco consumption, occupational exposure to passive smoke, low physical activity, alcohol consumption. And played a significant role in contributing the risk factors because without this knowing risk factor, the prevention of diabetes mellitus is uh, somewhat difficult. That's why we must know the what are the risk factors and what are the uh, causative factors and why we are thinking about the diabetes mellitus. That is burden. And now, the preventing diabetes in the developing nation is valued highly because the high cost of treating it. So, in, in a house or in a family. A person suffering from the diabetes mellitus means the whole family will be having the tensions and also the cost will be high in treating it. In India, it is estimated that a diabetic person spends a median of 10,000 for medical treatment. It is a burden to the family, community and as a nation. Okay. Even according to Ayurveda also, Prameha is considered as a Mahagada among the eight Mahagadas which are great importance and not treated in the early stages, it is asadhya and also yapya. Lifelong the treatment has to be taken. So this and also complicates like a prameha pedika. So these are all made you know, us to think about the prevention of diabetes mellitus as a primary, primordial, secondary, and tertiary prevention. Okay. Now let us see what is the definition of patya. Patyam roginam hitakaram apatyam samvaraha. According to Shabda Kalpadruma. The patya is a hitakara to the rogi. Patyam pato anapetam etya chuptam manasam priyam. Charaka says that which is conducive to mind and body is called as patya. This patya can be classified as patya in health, patya in disease, apatya in health, and apatya in disease. And also patya ahara and patya vihara, apatya ahara and apatya vihara. For every disease, every health, to maintain health, we have Patyahara and Patyavihara to be followed. Now, what is the importance of Patya? In medieval period, Vaitya Lolambaraja has Patya Gadatasya Kimoshadha Nishyavanaihi Patya Asati Gadatasya Kimoshadha Nishyavanaihi So, one who follow the Patya, there is no need of any medication. If you, if you do not follow the Patya, even if you take medicine, it may not be suitable. But in the case of Patya, Prameha or diabetes mellitus, this is actually 100 percent sure. Without of, along with your medication, whatever medication, Ayurveda or Aropathy or anything medication, but one must follow Patya. Why this Patya has to follow? That's called basis for Patya, Patya and Prameha. Why this much of importance has given in uh, Prameha Patyahara? Susa says that do pramoho bhavataha sahajo apatya nimitta jascha sahajo matru pitru bija dosha krit ahita hara jato apatya nimitta ja. So the basically the prameha has divided into two. One is sahaja and is apatya nimitta ja. Kaasar by sahaja and kaasar by apatya nimitta ja. So when he has given the apatya nimitta ja, this apatya nimitta ja can be prevented. Sahaja we may not be able to prevent it, but apatya jina ja can be prevented. That is the basis for Patya Patya in Ayurveda. And also, he says that Bauhashi Snigdaha Shayasana Swapna Shilaha Prayeneti. Again, further, Charaka says Asya Sukham Swapna Sukham Dadini Gramya Udaga Anupara Saha Payamsi Navanna Panam Udavaik Tancha Pramehayetu Kafakritya Sarvam. Because the lifestyle changes, dietary factors directly related to the Prameha. That is why the Prameha can be prevented as a primary level, a secondary level by following the Ahara, Patyahara. And as again says that in the treatment aspect and also uh, Ahara, Vatagna, Sleshmagna, Medohara, Rukshanapana. Vatagna, Sleshmagna, Medohara, Rukshanapana is again indicated in that one. So base, these are all the basis for the Patya Patya in Prameha. Again, he says that Ahara and Prameha, which is like Kadu Tikta, Rasa, Ruksha Guna, Ushna Virya, Pashaya Rasa, Lagu, Medha, Slesh Mahara. That is Kafa Medohara, Ahara can be taken. 
and should not be madhur rasa pradana guru and avishanti again a divided stula pramehi and prachanya according to ayurveda the stula pramehi patya is kapha medohara virukshana chedaniya lekhaniya whichever food article whichever vihara whichever treatment you are uh, asking for stula pramehi they must be kapha medohara virukshana chedaniya lekhaniya when you are applying these things to prasha pramehi you should uh, think about lagu santarpana ahara but should not be kapha medohara so lagu ahara is there but santarpana when you speak the santarpana may increase the kapha medohara but we should keep in mind that the food article which you are selecting for prasha pramehi should be lagu and should be santarpana that is exactly in the example quoted by acharya sir eva and pratyahara in prameha kantu sushtha chadaka yavodanam ruksha matapicha vakya madhyat sa suptan cha apupan so he has given more importance to eva preparations eva odana and eva eva vakya eva saktu again eva apupan let's say cake pancake that's cooking preparing cakes yoga eva again he says that ಉದ್ಘಾಟಿಂಗ್ and all these sailas can be used as a edible to prepare the shastika shastika and trunadhanya uh, eva pradhana padarthas so which are preparing food dishes by eva by trunadhanya by shastika it must be uh, processed with sailas like sarshapa taila atasi taila ingudu taila and tila taila okay. and he has given more importance to eva because eva is indicated in uh, prameha by all acharyas especially in kapha pramehi but as already previously mentioned that is lagu and santarpana so different different forms of using eva has been mentioned by acharyas but like keeping uh, overnight in trifala kashaya and morning you are using with along with uh, honey again seedu yuktan pramehi then sleshma vita kashaya drugs kashaya drugs and again you preparing the uh, mixing the guda by mixing the uh, thailas you are preparing the apupas and etc and also is given by very very important thing is that maybe practically not possible now but acharya's description is that eva is important in delaying digestion so that the blood glucose level will be not increased suddenly because of that is that he has given one smile so previous day we have to give this eva to khara ashwa go amsa and prashad like d and etc the second day uh, keep the dung from the dung you have to select that eva and you have to prepare the eva and give to it comes from the dead animals undigestedly that is it is very difficult to digest but at the same time it is also santarpana that is so important as given by eva so this eva preparation of uh, uh, i think more than uh, 50 dissertation works has undertaken uh, regarding eva in the case of prameha and also he says that sarodakam va atha kushodakam madhudakam trifala rasam trifala rasa madhudaka ani and water ani water is water process with madhu kusha like any grass or sarodaka that is the the sara of the khadira and seedum pibet negadam pramehi madvika agram cha pibet in long period of madvika type of asavarishta will be useful and mamsani shulyani mrugajudana khadye evana vividam cha bakshan so mamsa ahara can be taken that is actually jangala mamsa and that drink shulyani that is what we can we have like kebab but kebab will be having more masalas but we just uh, dry that just uh, 
spraying the or heating the show heating the mamsa keeping on the shula that is like a kebab only model but where we are not adding any this uh, we are heating and taking the mamsa so that will be useful in that one. and uh, again bagbata says there is one preparation called as sri kukuto sri kukuto amlaha kala kasti sarshapa kitajaha kapittam tindukam jambu stakra raga shadava kapitta phala tinduka phala jambu phala raga shadava in the form of that we can take it. and tikta shakam madhu shreshtaha bhaksha shushka sasaktavaha whatever you are taking the vegetables must be in the tikta shaka and madhu shreshta madhu can be used and danva mamsani as we discussed previously that is shulya mamsa especially jangala pradeshas and madhvarishta jirnaha sidu pakko rasodbavah madhvarishta is also important and asanadi sarambu darbambu makshugalaka even astangrade also mentioned that water process with honey darbha and asanadi etc can be used as a patya now this Uh, whatever discussed classification can be kept practically the item and patya beneficial among the series you can choose purana shali shastika shali purana godi and purana eva pulses mudga kulatta tila chanaka and uh, uh, masur dal and vegetables you can go for guruchi leaves kadali sara kara velaka shibru patola mulaka pata lashuna fruits pakwa kadali cucumber jamun dumbara vrikshamla bilwa tarjura etc oils tila taila danti taila mud taila sarsha taila milk and milk products takra mastu chagadugda milk is contraindicated but takra can be used in the tameha and sugars honey if you want can go chaudra madhu chagat madhu dala madhu all gold jagri gold jagri has been mentioned by acharyas and madhu also can be used and the fish meat those are non vegetarians harina ena dava kittira etc which will be easy to digestible and salt and charas vidalavana evakshara also mentioned and tubers varahi kanda is indicated taste of the food always the food the food must be in predominant of the katu tikta kashaya rasas and food preparation is madhuraka navaneta and yusha kulatha vikalpas and miscellaneous pausirin also has been mentioned by acharyas and coming to apatyahara then is jala milk ghee oils curd water has been mentioned apatyahara that doesn't mean that don't take water but less quantity of the water can be taken because prameha kapha meeda and there will be more jalamsha will be there maybe that reason they mentioned that like in taken water in little quantity and different types of Uh, rice preparations like anupa gramya avadaka mamsa ikshurasa pishtanna navanna guda amla padarthas can be contraindicated and ekasthana asana so simply sitting taking food and sitting let's go sedentary life can be avoided and divasopna can be avoided swedana can be avoided maithuna can be avoided in amutra vega dharana and now Uh, let me take you to regarding the patyahara why it is indicated and what is the practical utility purana shali shastika shali so whenever acharyas mentioned it's only mentioned the purana that purana means more than one year old so one year old when you take it so that kapha property kapha kara property can be reduced that is why purana shali shastika shali mentioned and this purana shali shastika shali glycemic index is 73 that's low and also these two are tridoshahara and not going detail about the guru shit rasagna virya paka but tridosha hara property and glycemic index and the special property is the grahi grahi is the property which prevents the the loss of water from the body so prameha patient suffering from the excessive loss of water that can be prevented by using the this purana shali and shastika shali now for example purana eva and goduma see goduma this purana is very important it is vrishya sheeta guru snigdha jeevana and specifies vata and pitta increases valya and lot of it but chakrapani says that fresh goduma that is nava goduma that is the kapha that's why purana goduma can be useful and if you see the modern science wheat is a good source of protein carbohydrates rich in fiber both soluble and insoluble vitamin 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 b 
and minerals including iron magnesium the most important is glycemic index is 54 and also eva eva already acharya has mentioned eva in different forms and most important food article eva in kamehi and eva is ruksha chita guru madurasa it is laxative generates feces and vata it is a vrishya and increases stability it controls disease of the urinary tract and corrects the disorder of the fat metabolism it is rich in dietary fiber that is very important in the diabetes status and also contains iron vitamin b6 magnesium and low in guys glycemic index that is only 26 to 30 it may be the reason acharya sir vividly mentioned widely mentioned eva in prameha and these are the preparations of the uh, goduma like goduma rava or goduma upittu or goduma uh, idli can be prepared and also eva in the form of mantha odana and malt it is kafahara styrekara balya and stula prame and very importantly it contains fibers particularly beta glucagon soluble fibers highly recommended in diabetic patients in the different forms and also we have preparation like eva mantha eva odana and eva vatya and eva sattu these are all again mentioned by classically and practically we can prepare eva mantha eva odana eva vatya and eva sattu and eva preparations again like a barley with roasted corn that sattu apupa as uh, charaka and bagpata mentioned apupa preparation by using eva that is barley pancakes and eva rotika this is also very discovered by the baba prakasha it's very important in uh, prameha and trinadhanyas the millets trinadhanyas like chamaka little bit odo millet they are madura shita lagu vatakara or lekhana and kapha pitta shamana it contains high fiber and low glycemic index so this high fiber and low glycemic index is very important in the face of prameha the glycemic index of these uh, millets may range between the 54 to 68 and they are rich in calcium dietary fiber polyphenols and protein the fiber contain 19.1 to 30.8 percent so here the trinadhanyas now the total uh, india the became is at millets millets in prameha millets in obesity so because of only the fiber content is high and also glycemic index is low and ragi the most important uh, south indian available but even north india also people are now uh, taking that ragi that is it contains it is a lagu madura tikta kashaya shita tridoshagna rich in vitamins minerals calcium fiber the specially ragi contains highest calcium among the any food article naturally available and also contains thiamine iron riboflavin amino acids and methionine and the benefit in madhumeha or prameha is it slows the digestion process increases insulin sensitivity regular consumption decreases fes by 32 percent and eliminate insulin resistant by that so so these are the benefits of the ragi which can which can be used in a preparation and ragi can be used in the form of ragi food prepare ragi dosha and ragi idli and in south india in especially kerala ragi puttu and ragi upma in other part of south india they are using so anywhere any preparation by using ragi upma ragi puttu ragi dosha ragi idli can be uh, included in that daily diet and ragi roti also ragi noodles also you can prepare it and next coming to simi dhanya there is pulses acharyas as uh, indicated in Pratyahara Prameha, Mudga, Kulatta, Chanaka, Adaki. So these four uh, pulses are widely available in India. And most importantly, in all dishes of Indian dishes, we have Mudga, Kulatta, Chanaka, Adaki. So especially Mudga, these things are Kapha Vatahara and Katvipaka and Vishna Virya Kulatta very importantly. These properties will reduce the Kapha and maintain the blood sugar level. The preparation made by these are yusha, good for diabetes, chanaka yusha, mudga yusha, adaki yusha can be made. And also they have high fiber and also low glycemic index. And kashaya swadu grahi shita lagumeda. So these are the important preparations of mudga. Mudga, kashaya rasa, swadu, grahi, shita, lagu, meda, slesh mahara. 
So this made the Shlesh Mahara property. And this is again Acharya Charaka and Vagbata mentioned Nitya Sevane Ahara Dravya. So every day if you are using this as a primary prevention and secondary prevention in Prameha, it will be useful. And more, uh, one more important this mudga is a complex carbohydrates in the form of high fiber, which aids in the digestion, stabilizes the blood sugar, and controls the sudden rise of the uh, sugar after a meal. Next to Shakavarga, Tikta Kashaya Kataka has been mentioned by Acharyas like Patola, Vartaka, Rasona, Bimbi, Karavilaka, Vastuka, Mulaka, Shibru, Tasamarda, and Guruji. So Patola, among this Patola is very important because Tiktarasa, Katu Vipaka, Kafa Pitta Prashamana, Vatala, it is digestive, good for art, Vridya, Vrishya, and Agni Deepana. It is Lagu and Vishnavirya. It is good source of vitamins and minerals. Also, it is slow in glycemic index, rich in fiber, high nitrate, and it is good for diabetes mellitus. So there are three factors are there, low glycemic index, rich in fiber, and high nitrates, which helps in the diabetes mellitus. And Karavella, all over India, is famous, and other than Ayurveda people also, and even allopathy doctors also, Karela juice, they are suggesting, because it is Jita Virya, Laguguna, Tiktarasa, but does not increase the Vata. And it is again a compound called as gerantin. The bitter god keeps the sugar level low. And bitter god has a great benefit in controlling the blood sugar. And uh, Karkotaka, that is small bitter god, as mentioned by Acharyas, Tiktakadrasa, and Deepana Aruchi. And glycemic index is 117. And uh, coming to Lashana, Lashana is the Vrishya, Snigdha, Vishnavarya, Deepana, and Pachana. Katurasa, Vipaka, penetrating causes the aggravation of Pitta and Rakta and Rejuvenator. But garlic is not rich in carbohydrates, can influence the blood sugar level down and glycemic index is 30. It's also a good source of vitamin B6 and vitamin B6 involves the carbohydrate metabolism. Vitamin C also plays a role in, main, role in maintaining the blood sugar level. The normal metabolism of carbohydrates restored after the administration of the vitamin C. So, so the action of vitamin C is similar to the insulin. So this is where research says that's why garlic adding in daily in the also good for diabetes mellitus. And Mamsahara, those who are non-vegetarians, are Jangalai, Mamsai, Apahrita Medo, Abhira Anamlai Gritascha. That is the meat of Jangala Mamsa can be prepared without adding any Grita or without adding any Amdarasa, without adding any other thing. The so fat can be removed from the Jangala Mamsa, can be taken. So there it is a Lagu Ahara and it is very digestible. While preparing also, don't add any oil, more oil and Amdarasa and take out the fat and, and can be consumed. So these are the uh, like uh, Shesha, Tittira, Baka, Lava, Ukuta and etc. I mentioned by Acharyas. And Taila Varga, especially they mentioned Tila Taila, Tinduka, Nikumba, Ingudi Tailas, they mentioned. So these Tailas may not be available practically, but Tila Taila is available. Sarsha Pasa mentioned Acharyas, the mustard oil can be used. And uh, wherever possible, Nikumba and Ingudi oil also can be useful. As this, this they, they possess, possesses like Tiktarasa, Ushnaviriya, Katuvipaka and Kapha Vatahara. And next, Atasi Taila is also available in the market. Linseed oil is Madurasa and Amla, Katuvipaka, Ushnavirya, beneficial in Vata and Agrivish Rakta and Pitta. It is rich in fiber and omega 3 fatty acids. Due to their high fiber content, flax seeds are considered a low glycemic food. Flax seeds contain high amounts of lignan, which acts as a powerful antioxidant, which proves insulin sensitivity. Hello? Hello? Sorry for this event. And uh, Sarsha Patela, the mustard oil, the Katrasa, Vishnaviriya, Agrivets Kapha. It's also best to cure Vatarakta and etc. But it enhances the activity of beta cells to secrete more to convert glucose into energy. 
Elastic acid which contains and vitamin E are the protective measures for insulin, both their rich in the mustard oil. So, because of this reason, sarsa oil is widely used in North India and also it's indicated according to Acharyas. And Falavarga, Draksha, Matulunga, Amalaka, Bilva, Kapitta has been mentioned by Acharyas. Jambu Fala, again, it is a uh, Kashayarasa, Madurasa, Kaduipaka, it is Vata and specifies the Kapha and Pitta. It contains dietary fiber, 0.6, and carbohydrates are there. And also, uh, it is widely used in the folklore medicine in a uh, diabetes matters. And Navina Mochifala, that's plantain or banana, is Madura, Shitavirya, Maduripaka, Guru, Vrishya, Balya, even though Balya, but in diabetes, as it is indicated, increases the taste and mamsa. It is a source of vitamin B6, fiber, potassium, magnesium, vitamin C. It has a glycemic index of 40, which means they will have a slow but sustained impact on blood glucose. So this we have to try to understand because uh, generally people may have that all fruits or sweet fruits may increase the uh, sugar level. But every day a small banana it can be taken because it contains only glycemic 40 and which means they will have a slow but sustained impact on the blood glucose. It is a protein rich and fiber rich which prevents an overall glycemic load the meal and limit the increase of blood, blood, blood glucose level. And as such, we can say that the sugars, uh, fructose will be increased. So not directly uh, sucrose, that's a fructose can be useful in all, the, which is present in all the foods, it will be good for health. And Karjura is especially Madurasa and Madhuripaka, Snigdha, glycemic index is 46 to 55. It is again rich in fat, protein, but rich in mainly fructose, that is important, and minerals, selenium, copper, and these micronutrients are so essential in preventing complications of the diabetes mellitus. This is maybe because of this reason, Acharya has mentioned Karjura also in a Patyahara. And Kalindafala, watermelon, ripened fruits, Vishna, snidely alkaline, aggravates Pitta and mitigates Kapha and Vata. The glycemic index of watermelon is 72. It contains 91% of water, low in protein, carbohydrate, fat, and fiber. It's a good source of vitamin C. That way, it, uh, it is indicated in the diabetes mellitus. And pomegranates, we know very well about Dadima, that they again contains antioxidants and it helps in the improving the insulin sensitivity, thus beneficial in the diabetes mellitus. And Takra, among the Hiravarga, the Takra is only indicated it's Kashaya Rasa and Amla Rasa, Madhuri Paka, Lagu, Ushnavirya, Agni Deepana, Prishya. And mitigates the Vata and being astringent or potency, opening up the pores and creates dryness, it mitigates the Kapha. It is rich in potassium, calcium, phosphorus, vitamin B12, riboflavin. Glycemic index is very low, 15 to 30, 33, but it is very high on insulin index, 90 to 98. And Sainthavalavana, among the Lavanas, also Vidalavana is mentioned. The Sainthavalana is Patya according to Yogarat Nagara. As I did in Madurasa, Vishnu Vishya, Vridya, and Pesvati Dosha, it is Lagu, not much Vishna, desirable for eyes, does not produce the Vibhan Vidhaha and digestion and is carminative. It is low in, low in glycemic index also. And Madhya Varga, in all Madhya Vargas, mentioned that fermented one, Sidhu and Chaktu is uh, uh, important. Sidhu is the best among the Madhyavarka, improves the voice. Apart from the uh, Kapha Medohara, if the digestive fire increases, it also strengthen, strengthen the body and color complex will be increased. It produces instant Vata and Pitta Snigta, but contains mainly fiber and sugar. And the Ahara Yopin Varka, we can use the Maricha, Pipali, Ingu, Prasona, this Ahara Upayogi Varga can be indicated in the Patya of Pramehi as Maricha, pungent in taste, it is penetrating, augment digestive fire, mitigates the Kapha and Vata, hot in potency, increases Pitta and gives the dryness. It is important healthy food going to antimicrobial anti potential and gastroprotective module. It contains mainly potassium, calcium, iron and magnesium. And uh, uh, among the Ikshavarkas, only Guda is important. The two Guda is a uh, Patya according to Acharya Charaka. It's a, again, Chakrapani says that Purana Guda can be useful. 
and other acharyas mentioned good is apatya and prati kalpanas in the diabetes people we can use kulatta yusha kulatta supa mudga yusha evarotika and chanaga yusha and coming to patya viharas acharyas has given more stress on vihara in the prameha or madhumeha vyayamai vividahi pragodai pragadai udvartanai snana jalavasekaihi sevya twag gola arch chandana minute that means external applications and also vyayama is given more important ukya udvartanam gadam vyayamo nishi jagaraha so apart from the udvartana apart from vyayama nishi jagarana also mentioned that's called nishi jagarana night awakening is again va kafahara and medahara and uh, always useful for the medagna uh, bahiranga chikitsa can be useful and see vyayama other forms of vyayama vyayama kaneta kupan digging wells sarilashaya digging niyuddha wrestling kreeda sports gaja tugara nigraha arohana asti sikshna aryan and kasheta satatam regular agriculture activities and chankramana walking so these are the forms of physical exercise he has uh, acharyas mentioned any one we can do it because the vyayama is very very important in uh, reducing the kapha and medas especially in the diabetes mellitus and importance vyayama as it says prameha since prameha is a santarpana janya vikara there will be a lot of medas in the patients of prameha in order to burn the meda medas the vyayama is essential vyayama you know ला लाघव कर्म सामर्थ्यम दीप्तो अग्नि मेदसाक्षय विभक्त घानकत्रत्वम सो दीस आर ऑल द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द व्यायाम स्पेशली दे बर्न द व्यायाम द मेदस सो दैट्स व्हाई द प्रमेय प्रमेह रोगी द व्यायाम हैज गिवन मोर इंपॉर्टेंस इवन मॉडर्न साइंस आल्सो हैज गिवन मोर स्ट्रेस ऑन व्यायाम एज इट सेज दैट इन एक्सरसाइज इंक्रीज द एनर्जी लेवल्स हेल्प्स इन रिडक्शन ऑफ वेट स्ट्रेंथनिंग द मसल्स एंड बोन्स according to who 30 minutes of exercise in a day can reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes mellitus exercise can be done in the form of cycling swimming brisk walking as our acharya has also mentioned different different forms we can increase the physical exercise and also while uh, telling regarding the adhana prameha and pramehi and dhana pramehi that is the poor people of prameha people and rich people of prameha so way this is means he has given more importance to again walking padatra virahita without footwear apa atapatra virahita without umbrella gramika vasi that is remaining at one at a one village only for one night that means you have to move to the next village like that way and uh, muniriva samyatatma leading life of a ascetic and remaining self controlled so again mental factors also given important yojana shatakam adikam va gachetu jerni ane foot of 100 yojana that is one six miles is called one yojana like that 100 yojanas without taking money or relative that is begging and uh, begging the things and taking by walking so that indicates that the physical activity must be there it indirectly indicates that the physical activity must be there for the prameha rogi and living only one foot obtained through begging so that means begging again is means that it is walking and i'll say the less carbohydrate in between will be so because of this reason they have mentioned uh, for adhana pramehi and those who are uh, dhana who are rich people they may be having more uh, sudden lifestyle for the purpose shamaka nivara along with use of fruits like amalaki kapitta tinduka ashwantaka and reside in company of animals in their shed consumes their urine and dung move along with them so here that means if they are sedentary workers and they are like a king or other people and they are lying rich rich uh, wealth and they may say that i don't walk it i don't have i don't need to walk etc but these people in their shed if they have cows and etc that they can do that work so that the physical activity must be increased patients who are brahmanas should adopt the profession of sculpture and curve the brahmarata so pulling the chariot of the god every day that also indicated and other should indulge constantly plugging the fields agriculture work and digging the wells and etc 
the patients of prameha who is emaciated should be protected constantly without any physical work so here he says that the stula pramehi can go for more vigorous exercises and the prisha pramehi you you can go less um, uh, amount of the physical exercise, physical work and we should protect them so in total the adana pramehi dana pramehi whatever they have mentioned the increase the physical activity the physical activity increases then definitely energy will be increases and the sugar level will be comes down that is maybe the uh, idea behind of these things and patient who are rich also we discuss and next uh, uh if they are in prameha rogi in obstruction regulation then we of animals desert like uh, regions removed its fat be consumed without adding source and ghee so whenever the prameha rogi have the problem with the urination or urinary problems then acharya suggested that animals of the desert the jangara mamsa without adding ghee and sour and removing the fat okay that is also indicated and uh, uh, nidana parivarjanam is the only uh, preventive aspect for the prameh rogi charaka says that yehi etur behi prabhavanti meha steshu prameheshu na te nishevya heto raseva vihita ithaiva jatasya rogasya bhave chikitsa It is the factors responsible for causation of different types of prameha should be avoided even after prameha are manifested as a primary prevention, as a secondary prevention. So that uh, nidana prevention is very important. As I already told that asya sukham, sapna sukham, badini. So that that they are the causes. So this the nidana prevention is important as a primary and a secondary prevention. And prophylactic measures. If you, as a primary prevention of diabetes mellitus, as you know, there is a concept of primordial prevention where mother, father may be having the diabetes mellitus, but child is not exposed, it is not at all caught. But where we are asking the children to undergo vyayama, regular vyayama, discouraging uh, taking from the sweets and etc. So, as a prophylactic measure in Ayurveda, we can suggest that people can follow Dhinacharya, Rudhacharya properly. In the dinner area, especially uh, Brahmi Mohita Uttishte and Chankramana, Vyayama, Udvartana, Ushnodaka Snana, Tambula Sevana. So these are all as a secondary prevention to, come, uh, to prevent the complications of the diabetes mellitus. And before diabetes mellitus occurs also, the people can go for this thing. And Ritsodhana. So periodical Ritsodhana also helpful in prevention of the complications as well as the prevention of the diabetes mellitus. And Ritu Charya, and especially the Vasanta Ritu Charya can be followed properly. So in a every day also, the Vasanta Ritu Charya principles, not Vasanta Ritu Charya, but principles, Vasanta Ritu Charya, whatever Vasanta Ritu Charya are mentioned by Acharyas, Acharyas can be indicated. And Nitya Sevani Ahara Dravya, as I told, Muddha, Sheshtikaan, Chali, Muddha, Kamcha, Sainda, Omnika. So these things, if you are adding daily, in your diet definitely we are going to prevent the diabetes mellitus and rasayana sevana especially raja acharasana following and also shilajit rasayana and according to modern there is a food pyramid in diabetes mellitus so the uh, majority of the food should come from the vegetables fruits and oats and etc so same way i have prepared a pyramid according to ayurveda in the case of prameha to prevent prameha to prevent manage prameha the uh, ahara must be from the starting Katu is more, Tikta next, next Kashaya, next Lavana, next Amla, least is our Madrasa. So this pyramid, if you follow in your daily diet, definitely we can prevent the complication of diabetes and also you can prevent the Prameha as a primary, primary prevention. As we know, we, we should know all, we should take all the uh, Sarvarasa Abhyasa or Chetrasa Bhojana. Among the Chetrasa Bhojana, the Prameha Rogi Bhojana must be predominantly with the Kattu, Tikta, Kashaya and least is Lavana, Madhra, um, Lajrasa. And uh, here I prepared a sample menu for diabetes based on the IV principles. It may be general because you may ask questions like that, Prusha Pramehi, Sula Pramehi, but this is generally the people, those are uh, diabetes can be followed. 7 a.m. bitter card juice, ash card juice, and uh, uh, what you can methi kajala. Alternatives they can take it. 9 a.m. in breakfast, they can add kulatta yusha and vegetable salad. 
or ragi ganji or vegetable salad or broken wheat upma or rava idli or coriander chutney with chutney methika chutney and etc and 11 am methika jala jeerka siddha takra or methika takra as a liquid we can ask them to go for the any takra preparation in 1 1 o'clock lunch time they were chapati or buttermilk and buttermilk and ragi ball so if those who are habituated to take ragi the ragi ball or ragi roti or ragi preparations and boiled rice and sambar and herbal tea green tea at 5 o'clock and churmuri that is a preparation of the uh, preparation by your uh, what you can call puffed rice etc fruit salad and bengal gram preparations can be indicated in the 8 o'clock mukkai krishna fruit salad or chapati or rice or kichdi or other things so you can make it uh, changing to avoid the monotony you can go for one by one one day muttu rishara one day kichdi or one day chapati and etc and 9:30 am 9:30 pm bed at bed time hot milk with haridra because milk is contraindicated but milk is also needed but we are adding haridra that is important so you can add haridra and you can take it and preferable vegetables as per me that kala verlaka ash gourd carrot red finger cucumber garlic drumstick cabbage and pumpkin or any available uh, in your local market whichever available predominantly tikta rasas and cut tikta rasas can be uh, taken and preferable fruits are uh, amalaki papaya guava arbuja watermelon mosambi orange and uh, khajura this can be indicated and so these are all the values already been discussed regarding that one ash gourd methi kadala bitter gourd manikula tayusha ragi rava idli coriander chutney etc and methi kadala jeeraka siddha jala and methi kadala and you uh, see we prepare the quantity of 100 ml it is a calorie values also we have kept here and also vegetables like ragi ball this churumuri sort and the krishara and bottle god these are all uh, already modern points i mentioned glycemic index these are all indicated food articles in uh, diabetes monitors unpolished rice or old rice one year old rice and especially unpolished or parboiled rice the parboiled rice where we will be and the more be complex in the rice that also will be useful and glycemic index is 50 only so uh, uh, preference will be given to the parboiled rice or under polished rice not polished rice and not white rice this also can be indicated and uh, most importantly those who are suffering from the diabetes mellitus if they are doing parboiled rice that diabetic neuropathy uh, complications can be prevented and researches till now there are so many researches only few things i wanted to say that based on the patya patya in jamnagar 2012 role of diet and lifestyle in the management of madhumeha where they studied in 30 uh, sample 30 patients suffering from madhumeha they have prepared the protocol i like dinacharya and also ahara and they asked them to follow for 3 months later they have checked that their glucose level it is reduced that indicates that their lifestyle and the ayurvedic patya is useful in research and the second category second research standardization of dietary intervention in type 2 diabetes mellitus uh, an ayurvedic approach it is uh, occurred in rajiv gandhi university of sciences in my college under my guidance my student has taken the study for two groups we have taken we have uh, computed two groups one group is uh, uh, with only dietary preparation dietary intervention Another group was only Nishamal ki churna, and where we got equal results, that indicates that we can you go for Ayurveda, Patya Patya, including uh, we can go for modern medicine or Ayurvedic medicine. But when you are taking the modern medicine or anything also, if you follow Patya Ahara, definitely the complications can be prevented. And the third study, a case control study to evaluate the impact of Ahara and Vihara in development of type two diabetes mellitus in Ayurvedic approach. Recently, we conducted survey study, case control study. One fifty diabetes people, one fifty non-diabetes people, and we have made questionnaire, questionnaire, prepared questionnaire, and we have uh, conducted study. That we came to know that 
those who are taking which are mentioned apatya ahara in ayurveda they are prone to get the disease this also we have studied clearly let's case control study study and uh, uh, lastly i would like to say few slides with uh, yoga and the diabetes because I, uh, yoga is a part and parcel of ayurveda now it is in anyway, my next speaker we will be going to speak on diabetes uh, yoga and diabetes mellitus just let me quickly go through the three slides therapeutic yoga practice of yama and niyama regular practice of asana regular practice of pranayama once in 15 days practice of selected shit karma and daily surya namaskar of practice by runs definitely will prevent the diabetes mellitus and may prevent the complications also and sitting supine posture we can go for sarvangasana halasana karnapidasana pavan muktasana prone posture bhujangasana shalabhasana dhanurasana navakasana standing posture padahastasana ardhakad chakrasana trikonasana sitting posture vakrasana adhamasindrasana shishankasana these are all asanas are already uh, scientifically proved to control the blood glucose level and pranayama anulom lo pranayama nadi shuddhi nadi shuddhi pranayama surya bedana brahmari bastrika pranavan vibhage pranayama so important and bandhas mudras vipriti karani mudra maha mudra uddhyana mula and jalandhar bandha and all uddhyana bandha mula bandha jalandhar bandha also important and chat karmas as we know it's a hatha uh, pratipika uh, indicated that medo kapha vriddhi so here medo kapha vriddhi is seen in the prameha rogi so we can use the chat karmas like krindal kriya kapala bhati agni sarge shanka prakshalana definitely prevents the complication of the diabetes mellitus and controls the blood glucose levels and we in conclude in that ఇన్కార్పోటింగ్ so we know that majority of the diabetes people are type 2 diabetes people in order to control diabetes in india government of india initiated national program for prevention control of cancer diabetes cardiovascular disease and stroke in 2010 it aims to set up outreach camps for opportunity opportunistic screening at all levels in the healthcare delivery system for early detection of diabetes among all the illnesses so here we can in this national program ayurvedic preventive principles like dinacharya rucharya patya patya we can implement it so that it will be helpful to reach ayurveda to the community and also bring awareness during special days like world diabetes day we celebrate all the institutions and give some awareness among the people of uh, community so that they implement the ayurvedic principles of patya patya in their daily life and my take home message is hope and happiness can make the life of a diabetic much easier understanding the disease avoiding the triggers and listening to the body for warning signals enable a person having diabetes to lead an essential normally highly productive and enjoyable life with less medication lastly my salute to ganapati gajananam bhutam ganadi sevitam kapitta jambu phala sara bakshitam umasitam shokam vinashakarakam haranam namami vigneshvara pada pankajam so here also it indicates that ganapati or vinayaka is much fond of the uh, more sweets but again he takes that kapitta jambu phala so the kapitta jambu phala has given more importance in the diabetes mellitus by ayurveda acharyas also and this also resembles okay thank you thank you very much for listening to my uh, lecture and thank you management principal and staff of admc asta and my special thanks to dr rahul sir for considering me as a resource person for this webinar and also lastly i congratulate the admc college uh, for conducting uh, such a beautiful webinar on prevention of diabetes mellitus thank you one and all thank you very much thank you sir now i request chairperson dr rahul nakel sir to say few guiding words for this session
हेलो हेलो सर मैं ऑडिबल यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल सर थैंक यू रेडी सर यू हैव एक्सप्लेन टू वेरी नाइसली रिगार्डिंग दत्या पत्या ऑफ द प्रमे इन वेरी सिस्टमेटिक एंड सिंपल मैनर इट विल बी वेरी बेनिफिशियल फॉर द यू जी एंड पी जी स्टूडेंट्स एंड इवन प्रैक्टिशनर सेल डॉक्टर रेडी सर हेज एक्सप्लेन दुकधान्य शिमीधान्य तैल वर्ग and all the ियल with timing and hello sir हेलो सर सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर माइक इन दिस वे डॉक्टर रेडी सर हैज डिस्क्राइब ऑल दम ऑडिबल हाँ हाँ या it was unmuted now is it audible hello yes sir you are audible sir hello yes sir uh-huh. yes sir you are audible in this way dr reddy sir has uh, given information yes sir Yeah, in this way, where uh, Doctor Sudhakar Minister has explained each and every aspect that is the patya patya yoga and other factors, even Brahm and all. Uh, thank you, Reddy sir, uh, for giving uh, such a beautiful lecture. Thank you. Thank you all. and or to coordinator thank you sir uh, one minute i am also thankful to dr vidya vastik madam who is now observer for this webinar thank you madam good afternoon sir and uh, i am very pleased to listen you sir and you had given such an informative lecture about uh, the diabetic pramaha and especially according to ayurveda you had uh, explained very well uh, i am very pleased to see you sir 
Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul sir. Thank you, sir. Once again, thank you, sir, Dr. Sudhakar Reddy, sir, and thank you, Dr. Rahul Nathil, sir, for such a proficient session. Taking the webinar ahead, I request Dr. Ashwini Khot, ma'am, to introduce our third speaker, Dr. Ketki Vag, ma'am. Thank you, Pawan. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Here I am introducing the speaker of today's third session of National Webinar Swasthya Jagat 2022, Dr. Ketki Wagna. Madam has completed BMS and MD from Bharti Vidyapit, Dimli University, Pune, and now she is PhD scholar in Swasthya and Yoga in the same university. Currently, she is working as an associate professor and HOD, Department of Swasthya and Yoga in RK University Ayurvedic College and Hospital Rajkot, Gujarat. She has published a five articles in the National and International Journal with three best paper awards, one by IIA and two in international conferences. She has also published a book chapter about Indian diet with elsewhere publication. She has also a uh, reviewer of her journal of Ayurveda and Integrated Medicine. She is now an ABH Ayush assessor also. I'm requesting Dr. Ketki Wag ma'am to deliver her lecture for this session. Thank you, Court Madam, and uh, thank you all the organizers of SGMC College uh, for organizing such a nice webinar and giving us an opportunity to share our knowledge. Uh, the topic, uh, so just give me a minute till I screen uh, share the screen. Uh, I request the organizers to just make me the host so that I can uh, share the screen. Yes, ma'am. Uh, please wait. Yeah. So I know this Just is a minute, third, yeah. I know this is the third session. Everybody has been listening to a lot of things. So I will try to keep it very simple, very short, and give you some interesting facts. So I hope the students are still listening and awake and not hungry. So we've been listening about Pathya a lot. Sir has given us very delicious pictures. So everybody is very hungry. So let's take in some knowledge and then go and eat our food. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you there?
Ma'am, you are the co-host now. You can share the yes. PPT. Yes. Can you see the PPT now? I'm sharing it. Yes, ma'am. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Okay, let me just make it into the full mode. Yeah. Sure. So the topic today uh, is Prameha and lifestyle management and improving the immunity of diabetic patients. So till now in the entire session, we have seen what the disease was. Uh, the first speaker very elaborately give, gave you all the information about the modern aspects of the disease. Reddy sir gave you a detailed information about the diet aspect and the Vihar also. So the next aspect that is remaining is in current situation with the patients of COVID. This is a comorbidity. Diabetes is a very big comorbidity. And now we need to improve the immunity of the patients also, along with improving their sugar control or improving their diabetes. So that is the topic we are going to see today right now. Next slide. Yeah. So just before starting the topic, I just want to give uh, you all to concentrate on this one slide. As you can see, there are lots of balloons over here. And we know that Excuse a balloon... Me, Excuse me. Slide. Yeah? Slides are not moving, madam. Okay. Let's... Is it better now? Not yet. Only the first slide is visible. Okay. One minute. Um, please make it full screen. Full screen. Internet would be like over now. Okay, can you see the second slide now? No, madam. Yes, you can see the second slide, but it is not full screen. Okay. Ma'am, please make it full screen. Yeah, there's a slight network lag. Just one minute. Huh? Sure, ma'am. Ma'am, make the slideshow, then it will appear full screen. It is, it is already slideshow. There is a network lag. Just one minute. Huh? Can you see it now? Uh, excuse Not me, ma'am. There are two options. Screen share and PPT share. If PPT share is not working properly, you can share the screen. Okay, is it visible now? Still is the full screen visible now? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It's not visible full screen. Uh, you uh, stop the share and again go to uh, screen share and then uh, it can show. Okay. So, okay, one minute. I'm screen sharing. Ban kar do. Can you see the slide now? Yes, ma'am. I can see the slide, but it's not full screen. I can share the screen. Share the screen of the. I think Madam should have proceed. Uh, we can see the um, without the uh, full screen also. We can see that. Okay, uh, so I'll just proceed. Okay. This one, please continue. Yeah. So no. Uh, as you can see, the uh, slide over here is of balloons. So I would request all the students that if you look at this image of a balloon, you will see that it rises up very fast. So that is what happens in most of the webinars. We listen to a lot of things. We take them in and we go up like a balloon. And then after some time, all the air goes out and we forget everything and we come down. So my request to all the students is that don't be like a balloon. Today, whatever you are learning, Keep it in you, remember it, and reuse it in your own practices. 
okay so with this now let's start with the session today next slide so in the first slide i just want to give you a recap of the different types of diabetes or meha prameha that have been mentioned in our sanhita so you can see that different acharyas have mentioned different types according to the hetu purva roop and lakshan so just it is a gist of all the different types that are there why it is important because according to immunity if we want to improve the immunity of a patient it is very important that we know that prameha is it occurring because of, as a lakshan of some other vyadhi or is it occurring as a swatantra vyadhi so these different types uh, of prameha sorry to disturbance yeah ma'am actually the slides are not moving uh, ma'am if yeah. uh, can we share this slide we have the ppt yeah the okay i'll give you yes i'll just yeah you can share the slide from your side there are a few changes i'll just mail you the Okay. Um, it is um, is it now. visible? Yeah, is it visible? It, it is visible. I have yes. sent you another mail just now. If you can share that PPT, that would be even better. Uh, okay, ma'am. Just a second. I'll yeah. just update just you in a minute. The, yeah, just share the second mail PPT.
Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Is visible now? Okay, can you take it to the slide with Prameha at a glance? The fifth slide. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, take it to the next. Is it slide. fine? Yeah, it's fine. I can see properly. Yeah. Next slide. The next one. This one. Next one. Take it to the next slide. This one. Yes. So let's hold, let's have a look at this slide now. Uh, can you take it to the previous one? Prameha at a glance. Yeah. Can you take it to the previous one? Prameha? Yes. Just hold this slide for some time. So in this slide, all of you can now see. Yeah. Can you hear me properly? Yes, yes I'm audible now. Okay. So I think we are now set. So let's start with the session. In this slide, we can see all the sampraptis of Sampramaya that have been explained in our Sahita. So there are two things that we need to consider from the point of view of immunity. When we are treating a patient of diabetes or Prameha, we diagnose it according to Ayurveda or modern. What we need to remember is that it can either be a disease which is occurring as a symptom of some other disease. This has been told uniquely in Ayurveda. They say, if you can see as a Purva Rup of Arsha or in Satada Jwar, you can see that there are Lakshana Prabhuta Avila Mutrata. So that does not mean that the patient is suffering from diabetes or Prameha. So this has to be remembered from the point of view of immunity. Because when we are thinking about immunity and Prameha, we need to think about a Samprapti of Prameha given in Charak Chikitsa So there they have told that there is mainly Drava gun of kapha is increasing mainly. And because of that, what happens is that Medha Shaithilya and Mausa Shaithilya occurs. So these are the two things that are very necessary for immunity point of view. Because when we think about improving the immunity of the patient, we need to restore back the Mausa Sohanan. Shaithilya has to be reduced. Medha Shaithilya has to be reduced. The amount of clay that has to be reduced. So here, this chart is very important. You need to understand whether it is a Svatantra Vyadhi or a Paratantra Vyadhi, whether there is some kind of avaran that is occurring and resulting into Prameha. So all these things, when we are thinking about Chikitsa or immunity improvement, come as a factor. So have a look at this chart in detail. Here also, again, which is Asadhyaya, which is Kruchra Sadhya, that also is very important. Because if we are talking about patients in whom we, are, we want to improve the immunity, we also need to understand whether this Vyadhi is at which stage? Okay. So when we go to the next slide, please. Can we have the next slide? Yeah, the slide before this. Prameha Chikitsa. Yes. So in this, I have given a short recap of the entire Chikitsa. Now here again, one important aspect is we have to see whether the Rugra is Balwan or Hinabal. So Bal over here does not mean the physical capacity. Again, we have to go back to the Bal explained by Ayurveda. So here for Pramehi patient, Bal means Prakrutavastha of Kapha Dosh. 
So if there is a prakrut avastha of kapha dosh, then the patient is balwan and then the chikitsa is different. If the patient is heenable, then the chikitsa is again different. Now again, this factor is very important, not only from the point of view of chikitsa, but also point of view of immunity. How it is important, we will see. Prameha as a disease is a lifestyle disorder. So there are many hetus from ahar and vihar which are causing the occurrence of the disease. Even in the sahita, there are only two vyadis which have been mentioned in the starting as a treatment with ahar. One is prameha and one is pushta. So these are the two vyadis in which in the sahitas, the first line of treatment is improving their diet. So here lifestyle is a very important thing. And with the ahar and vihar, if we can maintain the bala of kapha dosh properly, then we can improve the immunity of the patient also very easily. So in all this entire chikitsa, if you see, last point is always santarpan. In all the sahita, santarpan or samyak tarpan has been given as the main backbone of treating the patient of prameha. So santarpan or samyak tarpan is what? Again, restoring the balance of the doshas. Again, restoring the samyak avastha of the dosha. How it is possible? When we treat the lifestyle aspect of prameha properly. So let's go to the lifestyle aspect. Next slide, please. Can you, yeah. So now here in this slide, you can see which are the disease causing lifestyle factors in Prameha. Main first important, it is a metabolic syndrome. So obesity, hypertension, cardiovascular disease and diabetes, they are all going to occur together in many of the patients. So here lifestyle is a basic factor. Then again, in Avran Janya Prameha, this is a very common lifestyle hetu that is found where the patient will suddenly stop exercising that will cause an Avran of Vat and it will lead to Prameha. So again, some important factor has to be remembered over here. Then in Pittaja Prameha, what happens is that the patient is consuming various shar along with Pitta Prakopakahar. So here again, lifestyle is a major factor. Then in Kafaja Prameha also, Avoiding exercise, diva swap are common hetus in lifestyle which are causing prameha. Then again, in vataja prameha, excessive shodhan or ati yoga of panchakarma again is one more thing which is commonly seen nowadays or excessive food habits of causing dry food again related to the lifestyle. So here lifestyle as we see is a major factor in causing dosha vaishamya, dhatu vaishamya and that has to be reduced mainly before we start anything else. Again, when we come to immunity, lifestyle is again a major factor where immunity is going to get impacted. So we will see later on in the slides how we are improving immunity by simple dietary changes and simple lifestyle changes with yoga and diet. Next slide, please. In the first slide, previous to this, we saw how lifestyle like exercise or diet or co combining two wrong food items together is causing the disease. Now for this, Ayurveda has given very marvelous concepts of Dhinacharya and Rutucharya. So in diabetic patients also, daily introduction of any some kind of Tikta Rasatmak Dravya through Dhinacharya, Danta Dhavan or Kavala Gandush is possible. So these cleansing procedures are very, very important. And not cleansing your body properly has been given as a hetu for diabetes. So, or prameha. So, this is one thing where we can use our dinacharya concepts for daily small doses of medication for the patient. Now, in rutucharya also, in our sahita, it has been written that every word has been written with a proper thought process. Nati sanshepo, nati vistara. So, an entire chapter of rutucharya has been dedicated not only for swastha vyakti, but also for rugna. In Ashtan Sangraha, in Dosh Bhedi Adhyay, this particular aspect of Rutucharya has been explored. So for Kapha or Vata Kapha Pradhan pra, uh, Samprapti, like Prameha, we can use the lifestyle of Rutucharya. So that patient has to be told Vasanta Rutucharya as a Charya or a lifestyle measure for their entire daily routine or their regimen. Why? Because in Vasanta Rutacharya, all the regimen that has been given is going to restore the normal avastha of kapha, including shodhan procedures, including the diet and including the lifestyle. So this aspect of Rutacharya can be used to improve the lifestyle regimen of a Pramehi patient. And especially Vasanta Rutacharya has been indicated for such patient. Next slide, please.
now coming to diet as an aspect like i said we are going to explore how simple dietary measures are going to improve the immunity so uh, go to the first slide please turmeric yes so here i am going to tell you about one concept of moldox spore it is a concept in bioinformatics where each molecule has a binding capacity they study the binding capacity of the molecule and then according to that binding capacity its ab ability to improve the immunity has been given so lower the moldox spore that is in the more the minus it is the better that particular food item has an ability to improve the immunity so here we are going to see aharopi aharopayogi varga which has been given in the ahar varga keep the slide yeah so in turmeric if you can see the binding capacity is minus 75 so here we can see that it has a pharmacodynamic action of anti inflammation and along with that it has the ability to improve the expectorant antiseptic anti helminthic and blood disorders spleen disorders it can improve rheumatism bronchitis so it has a wide range of anti inflammatory action a simple component of turmeric in every day go to the next slide please we'll see which we are using active component is eugenol and again here the pharmacodynamic action is anti inflammatory it has an action on fever and bronchitis so again immunity in covid patients in diabetic patients having covid this has a very high moldox moldox score so it can improve the immunity of that patient very nicely again something which we can give the patient on a daily basis go to the next slide club which has an active component of beta caryophyllin as an anti anti inflammatory it has been shown to have effects as good as a steroid so hydrocortisone jitna effect uska rats mein jitna dikha hai utna club ka daily diet mein dikhta hai so this is again one more important aspect of our diet which has shown a very marvelous effect again a very high moldox score and an anti inflammatory action so all these ingredients on a daily basis are going to improve the immunity of the patient go to the next slide please now again a very common tiktara satmak dravya that we are having ginger which we commonly use in our diet again if you can see the moldox score is very high minus 75 and action is inflammatory and antioxidant so again antioxidant action is going to improve the immunity of the patient on a large scale go to the next slide black pepper very commonly used again has antimicrobial hepatoprotective and immunomodulatory action so it improves the immunity of the patient by improving the antioxidant content it modulates the cell mediated immunity and it also has an anti hepatoprotective action so it improves the functions of the liver so there is a wide range of activities which a small ingredient like black pepper is having go to the next slide star anise again a very simple product that we are using in our daily meals and if you see the pharmacological action again it has a very high antioxidant action anti flu action so very very important for diabetic patients who are having covid diagnosis and again antimicrobial anti diarrheal and antiseptic action and anti spasmodic so this covers again wide range of symptoms that patients with covid having a comorbidity of diabetes are having and especially star anise has been shown to have an anti flu action which is very very important in the current situation again a very high moldox score so good binding capacity and very easily reduces improves the immunity and reduces inflammation go to the next slide now one of the again most common ingredients you can see the moldox score is again very high onion we are using on a daily basis but we very rarely know that it has an antiviral action so antiviral and antimicrobial antioxidant combined together are going to improve the immunity of the patient go to the next slide 
garlic again has a very strong edema re reduction capacity comparable to that of a diclofenac so as good as a uh, oral medicine it is going to improve the edema and it is going to have an anti inflammatory anti microbial action and anti cancer action so again very high maldox score common ingredient but varied uh, action on the different systems of the body go to the next slide so tomato again a very simple uh, product that we are using every day and again in tomato also you can see that it has a significant role in decreasing the tnf alpha levels so it is in improving the immunity of the body by increasing the interleukin and the tnf alpha levels so simple uh, ingredient again a massive effect on the immunity so this is how the daily diet factors that we are using simple products can be given to the patient and they can or have the benefit of improving the immunity by improving the cell mediated and the tumor immunity now we will go to the role of yoga next slide for diabetic patients there is a list of asanas that have been derived by systematic review and meta analysis by various researchers so we will just go through the list of the asanas and see what is the effect on the different systems and how they are improving the immunity the first as list of asana is dhanurasan pose we are all aware it is a bow pose and it is a dynamic exercise so you have to move the body in various rigorous motions this helps in improving and strengthening the pancreas and therefore it is going to regulate the insulin level in the body bhujangasan reduces the blood sugar by dynamic exercise we will see the action of the dynamic stretching how it is improving go to the next slide as you can see bhujangasan is going to result in increasing the strength of our muscles and ultimately reducing the blood sugar levels go to the next slide two relaxation asanas have been told for diabetic patients one is balasan and one is balasan and one is shavasan how they are improving the immunity of the patient we are seeing that due to stress it is going to increase the activation of hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis which results in the crf increased uh, production of crf now what happens is that after crf stimulates the secretion of acth the glucocorticoids in the pituitary are going to improve uh, increase the immune regulators and because of that because of the effect of the glucocorticoids there is going to be an increase in the immunity of the patient so these asanas they are going to reduce the stress what happens I'll go to the next slide yes so because of reduction of the stress what happens is that the stimulatory components of the immune immunary response are immunity response are reduced and then stimulation of immunity occurs because of reduction of stress so pranayama and yoga anti stress action asanas like balasan and shavasan they are going to improve the anti inflammatory elements by reducing the production of glucocorticoids and thus a greater sensitivity occurs of the immune response and the patient's immunity is improved go to the next slide so the next set of asanas which are dynamic movements which is viparit karani asan tadasan these are going to increase the oxygen levels in the body go to the next slide so here we can see the effect of how oxygen levels or oxygen toxicity is occurring and how it reduces the immunity first we'll see that so superoxidic anion state of high oxygen what happens is that it results in the oxidative stress in the body so there are free radicals that are formed in the body because of oxidative stress and because of this free radicals the immunity of the body is reduced now what happens in these asanas that we are doing they are going to improve the oxygen intake of the body when we are performing these dynamic stretches the breathing pattern is increased to such a level that fresh oxygen is supplied to the body oxidative stress is reduced and the production of free radicals is reduced and because of this 
oxygen toxicity or this will reduce the oxygen toxicity in the body and will improve the immunity of the patient so oxidative stress uh, next slide please once the oxidative stress is reduced in the body then there is a chain reaction there is enhanced immunity and the vagal tone when we are doing pranayam or when we are doing asanas the vagal tone that is improved that is going to reduce the oxidative stress and will improve the immunity of the body by reducing the free radicals next slide please So as you can see, Mandukasan, Paschimottanasan, these are all asanas which are dynamic exercises which involve movement of the body and which are going to improve the movement and oxygen supply to the body. Next slide. The next asana that has been told is Ardha Matsendrasan. Again, this asana is a very complex posture it is going to twist the body it is going to twist the abdominal muscles and with this what happens is that the bmi or the waist to hip ratio of the patient is reduced and with that what happens is that the lipid and hdl distribution of the body fat is changed yogasana or yogic postures are going to distribute the body fat in a balanced way and that will improve the lipid profile of the patient Let's go to the next slide. So this redistribution of body fat and the balance of waist to hip ratio is again going to improve the HDL, LDL levels of the patient and improve the comorbidity that is associated with diabetes or by uh, changing the lipid profile, the patient's uh, capacity to exercise is going to improve. So diabetic patients need a lot of exercise which has already been explained by various sanghitas and this particular yogic posture and redistribution of fat facilitates those actions. So next slide, please. Yeah, these are just some of the postures that we have seen and pictures of those postures. So as you can see, there is a complete body movement over there. There is improved oxygen intake. There is reduction in the waist to hip ratio and there is a better intake of oxygen in the body which is reducing the free radicals so all these factors all these actions of yoga and pranayam are ultimately improving the humoral immunity and the cell mediated immunity of the body and improving the patient's capacity to exercise which leads to improved immunity this is how yoga as a exercise or yoga as a practice is going to help in improving the immunity of the patient and like we saw a few small dietary ingredients taken on a daily basis are having a very high ability to improve the immunity of the patient. So this is just a short attempt to give you a few pointers about how yoga and diet can improve the immunity of the patient in diabetic patients. Just a few references, which I have, yeah, next slide, you can see the few references which I have referred for this presentation. And I would like to thank a few of my colleagues who have helped me in this and few of my students, Shweta and Vidisha and my colleague Chinmay who has helped me in preparing this presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Dr. Amit Patel sir to say a few guiding words for this session. Hello. Hello, can I audible? Hello. Hello, yes, sir. Ah, uh, can I audible? Hello. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, firstly, I congratulate to all team members of uh, Swastha Jaktam 2022 of Department of Swastha Honorable Anna Saheb Dange Medical College, Asta for organizing such a wonderful national webinar. Uh, I know that uh, I, uh, I know that it is the last session, so I conclude my speech in short. Uh, Dr. Ketki Wag, madam, presented a very informative lecture on Prameha and lifestyle management. 
she covered all the references regarding role of lifestyle management and prameha uh, madam also uh, presented a uh, most important aspect that is the uh, uh, role of diet in immunity which is uh, very helpful in the management of uh, prameha uh, and uh, she also explained hello i am uh, audible hello yes sir okay 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 uh, she also explained the role of yogic practices in diabetic management uh, so uh, i congratulate all team members of swastha jaktam 2022 lastly uh, i am thankful to organizer to invite me as a chairperson thank you all thank you sir. once again Thank you, Dr. Kiki Arma and Dr. Amit Patel, sir, for such an insightful session. Today we literally had this webinar full of knowledge, and people like me had got many doubts cleared. Surely, this webinar is going to be very helpful in our life because knowledge never gets wasted. As we have university observer, Dr. Vidya Vasanik, ma'am, does I request her to present her view for today's webinar. Good afternoon, all of you. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible, ma'am. Yes. Good afternoon, all of you. On the half of MHS, uh, I would like to first congratulate uh, Anna Sahib Dange College Asta for organizing such a nice webinar on uh, prevention of uh, non-communicable diseases. and uh, also would like to congratulate the uh, swastha rutta and yog department um, uh, tatpunje sir and the whole team uh, that they had decided to organize such type of workshop um, and uh, it is a need that uh, many lifestyle disorders are uh, very prone to have in today's uh, we have seen that uh, the number of patients are increasing day by day of the non communicable diseases and you have decided mainly the diabetes mellitus uh, to overview regarding uh, this disease uh, uh, in all the aspects the first lecture was by dr uh, yugantar patil uh, ma'am and uh, she has uh, uh, given the detailed information about the diabetes mellitus and uh, the slides was uh, the slides were very uh, good and uh, she has uh, given a very uh, informative uh, lecture regarding um, the diabetes mellitus specifically uh, according to the modern view she has elaborated very really well and uh, after that uh, um, the second speaker uh, was dr reddy sir and uh, i am very pleased uh, to hear uh, sir as uh, they had given a very informative and elaborative lecture uh, regarding the prameha according to ayurveda aspects and they had given a uh, detailed information about the patha patha which has been explained in our ayurveda sanhitas and uh, uh, they had also uh, given the different recipes uh, for uh, um, pat, um, and in diabetes mellitus like yava ragi and other uh, millets also then uh, after that uh, the third lecture was uh, uh, dr ketki wag ma'am and um, uh, she has also elaborated about the ahar and yoga um, for enhancing the immunity and uh, what i observed that uh, all the speakers uh, has uh, given a very informative lectures and the slides were very were, were also very good and uh, i think this uh, webinar uh, was fruitful but uh, something is lacking is that uh, what i observed that uh, only 47 to 49 participants uh, including all the team members the guest speakers the chair persons and uh, all 
uh, and so uh, i think this should be the mandatory for the students uh, to um, attend this such type of webinar and uh, if uh, the participant uh, number of participants were increased and most uh, of the people um, would get uh, the benefits of such type of webinars and these webinars are specifically specifically for the students also that's why uh, i think uh, for further uh, webinars uh, which could be conducted by the mhs also the students uh, should made mandatory to attend such type of workshop and finally i would like to thank all the team members uh, dr nitin sir and um, different uh, team members of their department and uh, honorable uh, anna saheb dange college i would, look, uh, would like to thank to organize such workshop thank you thank you very much thank you ma'am meeting ma was uh, for the faculty purpose students were joined from youtube link they were there on the youtube and they were uh, to the lecture to you okay okay what i observed i uh, i told about that uh, only 47 yeah. 49 that's sure, right yes okay okay thank you ma'am a notification for all the participants feedback form link and to registered email id of all the participants e certificate will be sent on registered email id after filling feedback form now with this i request dr hemlata kore ma'am to deliver vote of thanks good afternoon everyone i am very much thankful to our great patrons honorable shri anna saheb dange our respected appa honorable shri advocate rajendra ji dange our respected bahu and honorable professor arekanai sir for your motivation and guidance i would like to express my gratitude to mhs observer dr vidya vasnik ma'am for their presence in our webinar I extend my gratitude to our honorable chief guest, Professor Dr. Milinji Godbole Sir, Dean and Principal Yashwant Ayurvedic Medical College, PGT and Arts Kodoli, to take out time from his busy schedule <coughs> to grace the event. Thank you, Sir, for inspiring and encouraging us with your valuable words on this special day. Also, I am very much thankful to our eminent speakers. Dr. Yogantara Kadam, ma'am, Dr. P. Sudhakar Reddy, sir, and Dr. Kethi Wag, ma'am, to share their valuable research insight with all of us. I am also grateful for our dignified chairpersons, Dr. Vikas Kathani, sir, Dr. Rahul Nakil, sir, and Dr. Amit Patil, sir, for their wisdom words. I heartily thankful to our principal, sir, Dr. Ashok Wali, sir. for his constant support and guidance for making our webinar successful i would like to express my gratitude to all esteemed delegates of the webinar for their presence and contribution to make this webinar a great success also i am very much thankful to our teaching non teaching staff and our students i extend my special thanks to mr jordan shinde sir to help organizing webinar even during this pandemic situation also i am very much thankful to our organizing committee members for working hard for few pa past few days to make webinar successful thank you all of you for making this event successful